Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Gamers Podcast. My name is Jacob Bessler. I'm Hotter. I am joined, as always, by Trollbeard. Howdy. And Bob Sick. Bob's just... He's never coming back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he will. He'll be back. Bob, Bob, you know, we took Bob to a farm upstate. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bob's out to the farm. Uh, but that's okay, because we've got plenty to talk about. We're going to talk about what we've been playing this week. And we're going to talk about a shitload of uh, PAX West, right? Yeah, East uh, West Coast, because it's the original PAX in Seattle, PAX West. Oh, they're not calling Actually, it PAX no. Prime anymore? No, PAX Prime is somewhere else. Yeah, PAX West then. Where's PAX West I think at? PAX Prime happens in, like, Boston. Uh, da, 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 looking it up. No, PAX West, Seattle, Washington. Yeah, so they're not well, the original it. PAX. I yeah. guess they changed it. I guess they don't want to make the other ones seem, you know, less than. Huh, maybe. That's weird. Cause, okay, whatever. <laughs> Who complained? What if there was, there was a complaint? I don't know. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. So, this week we've been playing a bunch of stuff. I've played Dead Cells, I've played Destiny 2 Gambit, and I can't wait to talk about the troll about that, because you're the person, perfect person to talk to about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, fuck me, I'm going to talk to myself, I guess. <laughs> um, and you're going to talk about Donut County, Hat in Time, uh, the... Help me out here. Oh, no, my uh, Dead Living Zombies from Far Cry 5, The Messenger... That's right. That's and right. Something else, I think. No, it sounds right. That's all. Oh, and Golf Story. I played That's the Golf Story. That's what it story. was. All right. So uh, let's get right into it. I played a bunch of Dead Cells. And uh, I love I love uh, the, the Rogue Light like. I don't give a fuck which one. Genre. And this one does everything so perfectly. It is so damn good. You haven't played it yet, right? I have not. I've been really thinking about picking it up because I am super into Metroid style. Yeah. Because, you know, I just played Guacamelee. I'm finishing up, you know, The Messenger. And, you know, that style looks good but my issue is is like i've played too many of these like back to back yeah i feel the same and <laughs> i probably need to just take a break yeah so i i mean i'm tired of roguelites that's my whole thing and that that little thing he just went down by that's part of the metroidvania aspect of this i could be wrong but roguelites typically aren't metroidvanias right no like, like well so rogue like not light. Let's just say rogue, rogue games. <laughs> well, we'll see. Rogue like and rogue light, very different. Because rogue like yeah. means it's closer to the original rogue, which was like a weird top-down isometric PC RPG yeah. kind of thing back in the day. Rogue light means you know, hey, you die after your run, but typically there's some sort of you know permanent progression you unlock. And that is light. The OG light rogue. Too. The OG Rogue was just like, oh, no, you're fucked. You just got to start over. Right. And yeah, this one does have, you know, you can purchase uh, uh, upgrades in between, not upgrades, but new equipment and, yeah, upgrades in between the rounds. Uh, and the weapons are totally different. Like, he, I don't think you unlock that, but he has the Nutcracker. That's the main melee weapon he's using. And it's just a big hammer that I believe has a chance to stun enemies. And depending on the quality of them, they can have other effects, like, uh, not stun, obviously, but freeze or extra damage on freeze. <clears throat> he has uh, wolf traps, which is just bear traps, basically, that's on left trigger. And the sinew slicers, I think, are on B. And those just, like, send projectiles to make things bleed. Yeah, so there's, like, traps and ranged weapons and melee weapons. Uh, he just got an upgrade that increases damage for his purple items. And then in between the rounds, you sell these cells, C-E-L-L-S, to uh, a vendor, and eventually you will unlock more weapons that's possible for the to drop in the game. 
and you'll unlock upgrades like being able to use your health flask more than once. Um, at the beginning of the game, you get a rusty sword, you get a crappy shield and a crappy bow. You can unlock the ability for them to be randomized with things you've unlocked from the game. So that would be really nice. And there's a bunch of other upgrades and unlocks and stuff. But uh, this guy looks to be going very trap heavy and range heavy. I usually do melee. But man, it is it is an absolute blast. But that little monolith I mentioned earlier that he walked by and ran away from, that's one of the Metroidvania things. Eventually you'll, unlock, you'll get a rune that lets you teleport from that to another thing. It's like a secret room. And those are a lot of fun. Uh, there's another little thing that lets vines grow straight up, like Mario almost. So you can't progress in the game until you get to that. So you know he's going to probably upgrade purple? Nope, he's upgraded green. Uh, so you upgraded his traps a little bit, because they're half purple, half green. But uh, I, I've made it three or four stages in. And, uh, oh, he's about to get fucked up. I got stuck on this part. Use your traps. Use your traps, buddy. That's how I beat him. So you'll find these elite enemies, and they will fuck you up. Oh, he is getting messed up. Oh, there it is. There's a trap. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing commentary now. There's a trap, and there's a win! There it is. And now he can, uh, he can use the little vines. See, this is the Metroidvania part. If you got the vine rune. You can go to these little piles of goo and turn them into vines. Well, the combat's fantastic. Um, I haven't got tired of it yet. Some of these roguelites I get tired of. This one I haven't. Not even a little bit. I love that you can you can either smash the doors or uh, dodge roll into them. And the the smashing of it will stun the guys on the other side. Yeah. You can also, when you fall, you can increase the speed of your fall. So, that's one thing that... I guess I don't I don't hate, but like it's just weird to me. If you fall, there is fall damage and you get stunned for a second. Unless you hold A and then you fall faster and do like a hero pose and stun everything around you. So oh fuck those guys. Those little dummies give everybody shields. <laughs> <laughs> oh game? yeah, man, I, I hate shit like that. Let's see. Hold on, let me go back to go back to the grenade. So that second bit there, plus 100% damage to a burning target. That's because it's Infantry Grenade 2. Infantry Grenade would just do damage. So if you can find these slightly better versions, they'll do things like that. And then, above the left bumper symbol is his mutation. Which I believe his mutation is just extra 30% of health, it looks like. But you can do things like... uh having a second life, basically, cheating death. Um, yeah. What else is there? Uh, you have, like, more ammo for your purple weapons. Little things like that. You get, to, you get to pick a mutation in between each round. So you do, as you finish the levels, you do get better stuff. And it looks like he's going to be going to the next level. Yep, here we go. Or we're not. You know, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, this is the other thing. So up there was the ramparts. Down here is actually a different level? No? Oh, when he unlocks that monolith, it will be. A lot of these levels have two different ways. Like, he could have gone to this area, which is like the something promenade, I think. Or you yeah, could go promenade. to the toxic sewers. So there's actually two different levels you could choose from. So there's a lot to this game. Yeah. Here we go. Here's some of the upgrades. So you can un unlock gold reserves. Now he'll have 3,000 gold every time he starts. Transformed items on the ground. So yeah, little things like that. Random starter shield, random starter bow, and random melee weapons seem like they would be some of the best. I've got health flask too. So I actually got two health flasks when I fight. And this guy's going to give him a mutation. So there's a lot of cool stuff there. He just grabbed the uh, recover th like three health whenever you kill something. And then this refills your health flask and your health. So it's a roguelite that's really hard and the enemies are varied. But it's also pretty forgiving and helps you a lot. Yeah. So I really like that. It also times you, I think, towards the beginning of the video. I'm not sure if I got it in here. And he tried opening a door that said it locked three minutes ago. So if yeah, you try each and, area yeah. has one of those. 
Yep, every area has one of those, and they give you a lot of good shit. Give you a bunch of cells, a bunch of gold. Uh, so that like there are aspects of speed running that actually benefit you. You're not doing it just for shits and giggles. But I'm I'm having a blast with it. Yeah, I think the benefit for a game like this, as opposed to some of the other, you know, rogue lights out there, like one I recommended in the past, uh, you know, that Galic Z. Yeah, that's a pretty the good one, one that you. That one, you know, like the combat is super basic. So much of it is kind of like the cheesy, you know, 80s Gundam anime style presentation. Yeah. And just, you know, kind of exploring these areas. This one, it stays interesting constantly because there's so many different variations of the combat of like the Spartan sandals where you just kick people. They're stupid. Yes, (laughs) that is so much fun. Yeah. Do you, okay, so, so that, Spartan Sandals with Frost Blast, which is basically just a, a frozen Hadouken and it freezes dudes. And then you kick that motherfucker into the wall. It is so much fun. Yeah. I Yeah, I saw that. I was like, Spartan Sandals. I'm going to kick things? That's stupid. Now it's my favorite weapon. <laughs> yeah, like I've seen uh, in some instances shields that if you block, it gives you health back. And all sorts of other, you know, variables yep. and special abilities. And I yeah, play this I, I'm game really interested in picking it up. It's really good. I play this game so differently from most games. Like, I typically don't go with shields whenever I play a game. I'm just very bad at parrying things. Um, I'm more of a, you know, the best defense is a good offense kind of thing. But I use shields all the damn time. Because, like, if you parry uh, Archer's uh, arrow, and it's not very hard to parry either, it'll kill him. It'll outright kill him. The grenadiers that are throwing the grenades, if you parry their grenade, it's going to make it a grenade that damages them and their buddies. So it is really good. This is actually, I think, the level I'm on, or, you know, stuck on whenever I get past this part. Some of these guys, like maybe that guy he just ran away from, can like shoot through the floor and shit. <laughs> That's kind of dickish. There's a time door. So yeah, I'm I'm having a blast with it. I would definitely recommend it. Maybe something I'll look into once I finish Spider Man because I've had way too much of my fill for Metroidvania styles. Like yeah. <laughs> Especially I, really hard ones that kick my dick upwards into my throat. Th- this is one of them, but it does it in a very tasteful way. Um, Tastes like dick. Yeah, sure. <laughs> the other thing I just bought but have not even turned on is... um, shit, What's the other big Metroidvania? Axiom Verge. Axiom Verge, yeah. It was on sale. I picked it up. It looks like something I would enjoy, so I'm, I'll probably play that this week. I might end up playing more Dead Cells. Oh, fuck. Uh, big, big suggestion for you yeah. if you do start with Axiom Verge. Oh, okay. Try to do that in you know, as few playthroughs as possible. How long is it? Be- it it's, it's not super long. I mean, you could finish it in probably two days. But the thing, I, the reason why I say that is... You could or I could? I, well, <laughs> I mean, I could probably finish it in like one like eight-hour sitting. Okay. But... The, the the thing I want to say, and the reason why I never finished it, is because I played for like an hour and a half one day. And I was making good progress, and I was really liking everything. I love the sounds. You know, Tom Hap, you know, he made a great game. But when I came back to it like two or three days later, because shit happened. Right. I had no fucking clue what I was doing. Because the map is just old school, OG Metroid. Just... Color coded areas can't like leave yourself any notes as to what does where. You know, there's no like okay. tracking of these side rooms. You've just now found the new thing to open that path. Unless yeah. like you're, you know, playing it, you know, back to back as quickly as you can, or getting old school graph paper out and making your own map like no. OG Metroid, <laughs> or following a guide. I mean, you could just follow a guide too, but I, I'm I'm the kind of Hole that avoids that until I beat the game. Yeah, uh, how long to beat says it's about ten and a half hours. 
Yeah. There's a pretty good chance I'll beat that one. That's not too long. But Let yeah, me- like I said, it's one of those things you just got to pay attention while you're at it because it's not a – like when when it's telling you stuff, pay absolute attention because if you're not paying attention, you will be so lost in some areas. Much do what, like do what? Hyper Light Drifter, which is about to come out on the Switch. I was a million miles away. What'd you say? <laughs> oh, now Gary would have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tick Flare. Okay, explain to me what Hyper Light Drifter is because everyone's excited about that. So, Hyper Light Drifter is, you know, an isometric. Uh, it's kind of this super weird art, uh, like this dark world of like these dead titans you, like the the entire story is told through pictures there's no text there's no dialogue so you're just like having these nightmares about things you wake up and you start a journey and yeah. it's just a really hard like adventure game of like you're just this drifter with a sword and you're just flying through researching like old tech finding new things and trying to discover the mysteries of the world like again it's one of those games where i started it i got a good chunk into it and i intend to get back to it much like axiom verge but i got so lost because i wasn't paying absolute attention it looks and there's no real there's no real easy way to just jump back in and figure out what the fuck you were doing if you're not, you know, focusing on it. Is this a Metroidvania? Uh, well, kind of, because there are certain areas and secrets you find, you know, after you unlock new gear. Or is this more like Zelda? It's it's, it's more of like OG Zelda. Okay. Like original, like Link to the Past, but really hard. It's easy to die. It's it's not super hard, but it's obtuse. Okay. Because there is no text, and you know the map is just like a picture, like a painting, damn near. So when you look at it, you just like, well, what the fuck does this mean? I don't know if this is one I would enjoy too much. <laughs> well, like like it, it's one of those things you gotta have the time to dedicate to get lost into it. Yeah, but it's coming on Switch. People are yeah, excited about it. Yeah, it's coming on the 6th. So that comes out the Thursday, the day before Spider-Man. Oh, okay. You see that map. map right there? Yeah. Like, Is that the just, whole game? Yeah, that okay. like you're seeing the entire game pretty much. Is, like You've got a couple different areas you're supposed to go to. I mean, you know, and now that I've seen more of, you know, Death Stranding. Oh, God. Okay. This game kind of seems like it would be like an alternate reality of like a Kojima world. <laughs> like some of the weird imagery and dark shit you see in like the initial intro. And just, you know, you, you can just get so lost in that world and it doesn't explain anything. Yeah. Huh. Well, enough of that. Let's talk about a real video game. Maybe. Yeah, there it goes. I've been playing a shitload of Destiny 2 Gambit, and it is so good. Um, I know you don't care about Destiny. <laughs> well, see... and, and everyone, you love to give me shit about playing Destiny. You call it my abusive girlfriend or whatever. Your Stockholm Syndrome, sir. You Keep that to yourself. Whatever you want to call it. But damn man, I'm I'm excited about these changes. The weapon changes are really really good. Gambit is a lot of fun. So the way this game mode works is you kill guys, you see he just dropped a mode of light. You pick up that mode, you go over, deposit it into your bank, and whoever gets to I think it's 100 moats first, their boss gets spawned, you kill the boss, you win. Now in the meantime, you can deposit a certain amount of moats to send over a blocker, and that closes their bank, and they have to kill these little mini-bosses before they can deposit more. Or, you can save up even more, and one of you can go over to the other side and fuck them up. So there's a PvEVP kind of aspect. <laughs> yeah. It's really damn cool. I don't know if any... I don't know, are there any games that do this type of thing? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I want to say, like, Warframe, there was a mode that does stuff like this. And there, there, there's other examples that aren't immediately popping to my head that have done similar things. But, well, to be fair, I mean, this is just the first-person shooter version of, like, Dota. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, like, it's kind of, you know, a battle arena. Yeah, <laughs> multiplayer online battle arena. Yeah, yeah, I'm loving it so far. There's gonna be there are so today or sorry, yeah, yesterday until one o'clock today, they did like a 24 hour preview of it. Um, I played three or four rounds, and you know, there's usually different enemies. I think there's gonna be different levels right now. We just have the EDZ, so he's gonna deposit. Oh, we tried to deposit some moats, but nope, they put sent a blocker over. Yeah. I, I just remembered the game that is literally only this. R.I.P. Battleborn. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess it was. Dude, I tried playing Battleborn. That game, talk about obtuse. Holy shit. Well, like, the the worst thing about that game, like, the actual just this competitive mode was fine. I enjoyed it. But uh... the thing... Like it needed work. Don't get me wrong, but as a start, it was a good starting point. Was it? But the problem is, like the stupid like campaign they gave you, it was just like an episode browser. And if you queued in, it was like everybody vote on which episode they want to play. Like you couldn't play it linearly. You know, if you're trying to play online with strangers, you had to coordinate with your whole squad of people to vote to play the episodes in sequence. It was so stupid. Right. Yeah, I just, I found the characters, like, I've played a lot of MOBAs. I've played a lot of MMOs, all these type of things, played RPGs. This is my kind of game. I play a ton of Overwatch, and man, I just, I was always confused as to what the hell was going on. I didn't understand what I was supposed to be doing. Like this guy in particular, yeah. I felt like I was never doing damage to anybody. And ah, he was like, my favorite. Like <laughs> I couldn't kill shit with anybody. Yeah. It just felt like you weren't doing anything. It felt like, you know, Destiny had this problem a little bit where they were like, we're going to tone everything down and kind of make it, I don't even know, I don't want to say realistic, but challenging. And everyone said, no, fuck that. I want to feel powerful. I want to feel like a badass. Battleborn, I never felt like a badass. You know, you this guy could kill enemies, all right, or like you know, uh, AI. But I never felt like yeah. I could, I could pl- kill players, and I felt like that was his job as a sniper. Yeah, the the little bit I played because I played like right at launch. It was uh, he was just so like unbalanced compared to other people. Yeah. But I, I still I still enjoyed playing him because I, I I I play a lot of games with like the worst characters just because I like that character. Sure. <laughs> but in in the seem like like this guy he's a sniper, his time to kill or at least his shots to kill should be pretty low, but it wasn't. And there were other guys like maybe this guy he's shooting at is that the commando? Yeah, he, that's the soldier seventy six guy. Fucking wrecked people. Yeah. And then there was a guy with the melee, uh, the two red swords. He would wreck people. Yeah, his little cross attack was yeah. stupid. Like, because it was ranged. It was just. There were certain characters, like, you kind of. A lot of times it felt like these are the main characters and they're going to carry everything, and the rest of you are here to just die. That's exactly how Battleborn felt to me. Yeah, you were just here to pull aggro. Pretty much. You were the Leroy Jenkins of the group. Yeah, you're you're here to die for the soldier guy and the sword guy. And and even like the, the, the giant dude with the chain gun, he died easily and he was a fucking tank. Yeah, you were supposed to build these turrets with the points and I don't know. This is one game I'm I'm kind of okay with that it went away. Cause like they had well, enough time. It- I think it's still officially free to play. Is it? After, you know, Randy Pitchford is like, hey, we're not going to make this game free to play. Oh, I think 
Yeah, that's right. They did release a free to play, but they said they're not going to bring out any new content. Isn't that this like that they can so they're going to fix little things but not bring out any major things? I could be wrong about that. That might be a different game. Well, uh, say that again. That they're going to leave it out there for people to play, but they're not going to release any content for it. Yeah, they put out the the final patch essentially right at the free to play thing and then moved on. Yeah, make make Borderlands just <laughs> Well, it's crazy that like a Gamescom or two ago they showed like a tech demo of the tools and shaders they were using in Unreal Engine 4. And then that was like the only thing that vaguely like directly hinted <laughs> at Borderlands 3. Yeah. Other than Randy Pitchford, I think like his tweet said to the effect of we're working on the thing you believe we should be working on or something like that. Like <laughs> we're making the thing you want. Relax. It's actually aliens. <laughs> Man. Oh, yeah, hopefully not. But uh yeah, I've been playing a bunch of Destiny. I'm back in it. Um I know I said a few podcasts ago that I'm not gonna be there on day one. I lied. I already pre-ordered it on PC. I'm excited. <laughs> but here's, like... I feel like I shouldn't have to defend myself. <laughs> well, hey, man. Like, that's the thing I always tell people. is like, play the thing you want to play. Enjoy <laughs> yourself. Don't listen to people being haters about something, even though they may be right. Have you Just... seen this fucking trailer? The, the I've cinema- seen it, but... You know, if I just don't care about any of these people, it's so good. I can, I, Our guardian I can talks. appreciate the thing. It's just, it's so badass. I am so excited to get in there. I've been I cleared out all these weapons. I don't give a fuck about. I got. I'm trying to get the new gear. I'm playing again. I like the changes they've made to the director. I like the the weapon slot changes. I'm using my Telesto all the time. I got a shotgun in my primary. The world is good. I love it. I can't wait to go on the hunt for these motherfuckers. But this is this is exciting, man. Like this is hopefully the commitment to Destiny is going to pay off. I'm hoping. Yeah, hopefully they pull it together and you know, they finally taken king this or whatever. It's happened in games before. It happened with The Division. Um, it happened with Destiny 1. Uh, shit, there's another... Oh, it happened with No Man's Sky. It's it's entirely possible. Right, Bob? Yeah, that's right. I completely yeah, that's right. It. I wear <laughs> horror and glasses and I like Pokemon, goddammit. <laughs> you could probably do a better Bob accent than I could. Or impression. <laughs> But uh, uh yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, I'm excited that they're coming out with all this new stuff. They're coming out with um the raid in 10 days, which is pretty smart cuz it's going to let people get used to the new gear and everything. Um I played a bunch of PVP today and with the weapon slot changes, that feels like a whole new fucking game. Cuz like there's a lot more shotguns out there. Um the the three hit hand cannons are fucking great. Uh, God, what else did they majorly change? I guess just having like grenade launchers and everything, having more access to them is really nice. Like I've been using the fighting lion a lot because you get a lot more ammo for it. And uh, yeah, and didn't they say they're bringing back machine guns? Yes, holy shit, yes, that's amazing. I think they show it in this trailer, maybe. No, I think that's in the Vidoc. Yeah, they show somebody kind of reloading a machine gun. So, so that I mean, that's nice that they're telling us things like that. That's all we've been freaking asking for is just talk to us, man. <laughs> just tell yeah, us what just, you're thinking. Just, hey, say something. You know, that's part of, like, the mass appeal of Fortnite is because Epic Games get out, gets out there and says shit. Like, every week they respond to people yeah. instead of having a post like, Hey, we're gonna fix it. Four months later, here's a patch that kind of fixed it. <laughs> yeah, not like, good enough. 
Four more months, you'll yeah. have another patch. But in the Vidoc, they were talking about the Black Armory, which is the next set of DLC that'll come out. And they were talking about how, you know, wouldn't it be cool if there were these smiths in a, a hidden part of the universe that make the most notorious weapons and you're going to have access to them. And it's like, yes, yes. <laughs> it would be interesting. Tell me more. Well, we'll tell you more in a I, couple months. Well, fuck. I, was say, <laughs> I just hope it's not like the reef. Oh, it's just another place to go and do shit. <laughs> it's, it's cool in concept. I mean, it, it, even if it was just a place to do the activity of getting the quest to go out and do things. That's all people want. Dude, the Whisper of the Worm quest, that's all anybody's fucking talking about. It's just a quest to get an exotic. And, like, that's what people want. And they said, you know, we're going to cut back on the narrative stuff. We're going to have more storytelling in the environment. We're going to have more secret quests. We're going to, it's like, yes! It's what the fuck we asked for! (laughs) Yeah. Less jumping puzzles. More quests. Oh no, Whisper of the Worm was a giant jumping puzzle. I have a feeling it was. It, you know, <laughs> it was. I've watched my brothers and my dad do it, and I, they're like, you want to try? I was like, no, what? No. <laughs> it's like, hey guys, you remember when you were doing stupid shit to find the skulls in Halo? Yeah. Yeah? Well, we made a whole game about it. You fucks! Yeah, there's these tiny little ledges you have to jump on, and then you get to another part where the whole screen is like slanted. And there are these blocks that try and push you off the edge, and, huh. and you have to get to the and end. Then and do you, have... you have your friend crouch, and you jump on his head, and then no. he jumps. And you jump off of him and bounce grenades off the floor to throw yourself in the air. Well, luckily, there's none of that. <laughs> um, when they were doing it, actually, they uh, so uh, they two of them got past, and I was like, "Well, you guys just run ahead." The third one, it'll like you know, it usually teleports you when you're too far behind your allies. And uh, they're like, no, this is this is just in the in the sandbox, so it won't teleport him to us. I'm like, oh fuck, that's messed up. <laughs> Which, if the two could finish the quest themselves, you know, kill the shitloads of enemy you have to kill, they'd all get the whisper of the worm. But you really need that third person. But it's it's a brutal quest. You know, there is one thing I always will give Destiny credit for was the golden gun. I just... For Hunters? I always... Look, yeah, the Hunters. That was the only character I ever played. That's what I played. And, and the problem in Destiny 1 is they were pointless in any of the PvE stuff. Unless... <laughs> like, you had to play so much to a meta to be useful as a hunter in any of the high-level, like, Nightfalls. Yeah, see, I, I guess I, I missed out on all that stuff because it was just me and Bob playing through the campaign. Yeah. Like it, like my my buddies, like I tried to jump in with them, and Destiny One is like, well, I'm you know Golden Gun guy because I've been playing PvP, <laughs> you know, I've been in the Crucible. I was like, well, you got to change that, or else you're just pointless. I was like, what? You mean I have to completely change the entire way I want to play this game to be remotely useful? I was like, yeah. So then you had to be like the stealth guy, like the the blade dancer, the electricity guy, because if you crouch, you go invisible, and you were just running out there to revive people and run back. <laughs> yeah. You were just like a medic somehow. Yeah, I think they, they've definitely listened with this one. Um, you know, they were talking about the raid. I guess there, somebody said there's only going to be one raid layer. There's the machine gun. There's only going to be one raid layer, which is like a, you know, like a subset of the main raid. But they've also talked about how the raid is going to evolve. The Dreaming City is going to evolve. And that's really exciting to see how that's going to change. Um, but they're going to have the the armory, the Black Armory, and then they're going to have Joker's Wild, which is going to be uh, Gambit-centric. And, uh, and that's going to evolve Gambit. We're going to find out more about the... Uh, uh, what are they calling him? The the Gambit guy. He's like the, the Wanderer or something like that. We're going to find out more about him. And then the third one is just called Penumbra. And it kind of seems like they don't know what the fuck they're doing yet. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess it's fine. It's like, all right, whatever. Just figure it out eventually, please. But, just uh... <laughs> figure it out. Don't make it suck. Yeah, pretty much. So I don't have the annual pass yet, but I'm sure I will. 
But all this stuff coming out by summer 2019 is pretty exciting. I'm just like like you said, I'm really, really hoping that this is hoping it won't suck. This is what they were talking about. It's like people we noticed were mostly playing Escalation Protocol and the Whisper of the Worm quest and it's like, yeah, no shit, that's cause that's what we want. Yeah, I, that was I, the cool shit. <laughs> yeah. I played a bunch of uh Escalation Protocol today. It's fun. It's you know, wave based stuff, but it's a lot of fun. I'm interested now in getting the exotics that I don't have yet. So here's some stuff for the black armory. Like it, it's super so, interesting. Is that just like an Excalibur sword basically on the side of a gun? Like what the hell? Hell yeah, <laughs> who cares? Let's fucking go. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> That's I what... to shoot, you know, rubber chickens at people. So I, I I'm not sure what they said in the beginning of the video because the first thing they said was like, We need to make Destiny Word again and I was just like, Fuck yes! <laughs> Wait, what were you saying? hold on, what did you just say on <laughs> the past the we need to make Destiny Weird again part? <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, it. hey, go back. We all we all reacted yeah. to the cool thing you just said, the thing we've wanted. <laughs> That that's how it should be. I mean, Destiny's fucking it's wild. It's, it's space wizards from the moon. Yeah. We don't need like serious shit in our destiny. Get your platforming and get your serious shit out of my destiny, right, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> oh wait. Well, boop. Uh, well fire, yeah. Do this fire alarm. <laughs> That's fire alarm and smoke detector. <laughs> Tried fixing it the other day and he couldn't. I thought that was funny. <laughs> I was like, yeah. God damn it, Bob. It's the 9 volt, man. Relax. Oh, no, he said they were proprietary batteries that were annoying. Oh, no. Had... Yeah, he said he had trouble finding the batteries. Finally bought some and then never changed them out. I was like, you've got the solution to your problem. Like, right there, man. What are you doing? I think he finally did change them out. They're just yeah. still not working. <laughs> because, you know, fuck it. Yeah, because fuck it. Single board, you know, computing. Yeah, that, that's pretty terrible. You but, gotta uh, hold that power button down while the battery's out to flash the EEPROM. So you, that's probably what so he needs to do. Yeah, that's usually what happens. You know, much like a router or anything else, just unplug it from the power and just discharge the circuitry by holding the power button. Got it. That's what Tech we do stuff. with PCs, yeah. Fingers and butts, yeah. Fingers what? and butts. Which takes us to our next game, Dead Living Zombies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not wrong, because, I mean, if I had the choice to Hashtag play this again and get a prostate exam, I'd probably go for that prostate exam. Oh, damn! So far, you've liked the Far Cry 3 stuff. Uh, well, five, but yeah. So wow, did the I just say this, three? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> man, you're going back in time. Oh, well, the, the the problem with this is was the same kind of problem I started having with the DLC when I finally tried to play it like podcast or two ago for Wolfenstein. This is just like they literally just made a bunch of like well produced versions of the. Yeah. Far Cry Arcade. So these are all just kind of like little challenge missions that have like this produced story about a, you know, this the the character, this terrible movie producer. Can I stop you for a second? Yeah. What the fuck is your objective right now? <laughs> <laughs> so it, like all of these stories take place. It's a movie pitch. Okay. So this fucking creep, he goes and all the like the. Story cut scenes is it and the, Blood the DLCs Dragon guy? for Far Cry. It's the guy who's trying to make the movie Blood Dragon, right? Okay. In the campaign of Far Cry Five, and so like the whole time you're playing this, you're hearing like commentary back and forth between the person that actually does shit and this guy trying to sell a pitch for a movie. Okay. And then occasionally the person you know has a better idea, and it's like, well. So far, you know, it doesn't really say anything about any real problems. And he's like, the problem I'm addressing is entertainment, goddammit. 
You know, like he's just trying to make dumb Michael Bay shit, <laughs> and he's pitching it to people that are like actual like well respected actors or film producers. And they're like, well, what's the message here? What are you trying to say? What's the real story? He's like, that we're going to shoot a lot of fucking zombies. <laughs> and like, I don't think that's really what I'm after. 999,999 zombies. <laughs> Am I, did I get that right? Yeah. So, nice. you know, at random points in these stories, like the way the conversation between the guy pitching and the actual you know, person being pitched to the whole like setup can change randomly in the middle of the story. Okay. So that are on fire or, you know, other things, but it really is just kind of like shallow. Like there's not much here unless you just really like challenge missions. Oh, okay. Is it, is it like a horde shooter? Well, essentially because, the areas that have like the zombie like spawning pods or whatever I forget what they're called. Like there's these tanks that have these little bulbs you have to shoot. And you gotta shoot them all and then the thing collapses and the zombie stops spawning. Unless you do kill, you know, the pods, you know, the zombies never stop. Thing on the right like side. in this video here, there's one on the right. Okay. That yellow light with all those yellow tubes. So the this mission was actually kind of cool. This is like the last mission. You, you drive this car to get to the base and then you fight inside this, you know, this underground bunker. But again, like they're all short, like much like Donut County we'll talk about shortly. I finished all like 70s little vignettes in like less than two hours. Huh. Which so, you know, the DLC is what, 20 bucks? Well, the the season pass for all three of them was like 20 bucks or something like that. Oh, okay. It, it, it Like, they weren't expensive. And the cool thing is, at least, all these DLCs, all these assets are added into the arcade. Yeah. So you can, you know, go make stuff now with zombies that have, you know, zombie AI scripting and all this other stuff. But, uh, you know, I, like, I'm just not interested in doing that. This looks pretty wild. Yeah, like like I said, they they just they're just well produced arcade levels with some voice acting added on top of it. I think, but they really don't yeah. do much interesting. As long as the DLC is cheap, I don't see what if there's anything wrong with that. That's what the other the, two have pretty much been, right? They're just little short stories. Yeah, well, at least the the first two were kind of like smaller, self contained games. Yeah. You know the the first one was Vietnam. There's a whole like story and outposts. It's it's they're the first two are like actual like open world short story things. Okay. And you know like you go to to Mars and fight off you know an alien horde, or you're you know trying to escape Vietnam because your helicopter crashed, and you've got you know secrets to find and challenges to do out in these open world areas. But then this one is just, oh, hey, here's a couple levels. Huh. Shoot a bunch of things and move from point A to B. If you want to do it again, you can turn on time attack mode and time yourself. I was like, how about I not? Is the story at least entertaining? Yeah, like the 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 writing of a douchey guy coming in here and trying to sell bad movies to people. Like they're amusing, and they got some, you know, some fun jokes, some cool moments. So, like it, it, like it wasn't a terrible waste of my two hours, since you know it was, it was over so fast. Yeah. But then again, you know, there's the issue of it being over so fast and not having much there. Hmm. So, I mean, now that you've played all three DLCs for Far Cry Five, would you recommend the season pass? Yeah, I mean, just for, you know, Vietnam and Mars, like, if if you, well, for Mars, if you don't like the character of Herc, <laughs> I mean, he's the entire thing in that DLC. If you don't like Herc, uh, then you can just fuck off. Yeah, like, like, Herc's great. Like, I remember I was telling, you know, 
my boss at work, you know, I convinced him to buy it, you know, because he found, you know, the 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 combo pack of the game and DLC cheaper together. And I was like, man, I, I love Hurt because he literally is just like Leroy Jenkins. Because when you have him in the base game, uh, he has a rocket launcher as his weapon. Yeah. So so that he just fires shit at everything and it blows up. And I used to get so mad, but I'd just have just good times laughing because I would just all of a sudden just hear, Hercules! <laughs> He'd just be running with an RPG and fire it and kill himself. And I'd have to go pick him up. I was like, God damn it, Hurt. This helicopter's killing us, man. Why are you shooting a tree and dying? Also, the thing that bothered me the most about this Dead Living Zombies that I just remembered seeing in the video is these are one and done runs. Right. So if you die, you start it completely over. Oh. There's no checkpoint. So this last one that was pretty cool was pretty long, and then I, f- I fucked up somewhere and died, and then I had to do the entire thing again. I was like, "Oh no, what do you mean?" Right. But yeah. I mean, by now, this game is pretty cheap. Far Cry Five itself, other than you know, a horribly uninteresting like story, like well, well it's. It's interesting at first blush, and then it just proceeds to shit the bed. Right. But if you enjoy like cool, awesome looking open areas, having fun, just bullshitting, it's co op, the main story, go have fun. Actually, I think the DLCs you can play co op too. Yeah, the season pass is $30. Yeah, it was 30 Okay. So, actually, you know what? Did we ever talk about Far Cry 5? No, because it was well and done before we started up, you know, doing the podcast. Okay, let's talk about Far Cry 5. At least a little bit, because we do got plenty of trailers to watch. Yeah. I love 3. I still feel like 4 is the absolute best, because I love that world and I love pagan men. I really thought 5 was going to be better. And it is like a really good Far Cry game, but now I mean I never finished it. I got like halfway through it, I think. I just, man, after a little while, you just don't give a fuck about these villains. I'm more interested in like the good guys and the other people in this world, and even then, like you get very little interaction with them. I even read the book for this game, and it's fucking fantastic. Now, if only they had put some of that writing in the actual like structure of the game. Yeah, you <laughs> should you should read the book. It's really good. And it, yeah, actually, it would be it'd be a lot better if some of that writing was in the game, because I and maybe it's just because it, it's such a disconnect between like the silliness of the gameplay and the seriousness of the plot, and just like the the gravity of all the things that are happening in this area. And that's what I got from the book was how fucking seriously demented this cult is. Cause the book goes really far into that. And then you get in the game and it's like, I got a cheeseburger bear. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, well, see, yeah, my, out the of biggest it. issues for me is, well, one, like the, like not going to spoil the actual ending. Yeah, please don't. But... I will finish it eventually. Well, like the the lead up to the ending, like the hints as to what the ending would be, do you know where you get that information? Where? No. The fucking radio in your vehicles. Okay. Through news broadcasts. Like the hints at the ending are in these news broadcasts. But if you're you know not in a vehicle and not on the station oh, at the time. Oh I see. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, it's like so. You know, I, the game telegraphs. I thought you were saying happened. like the ending of, or like you get there's a cutscene or something. <laughs> well, like, like there isn't actually an ending of the game, but like, like the lead up, like the story moments telling right. you this is going to happen. Like other than some stuff late game, like the actual initial idea of you know why this you know situation escalated so quickly, 
is on like these news broadcasts, like in front of those TVs or on the radio in the vehicle. But then like, it's so easy to never have seen those. And those are, you know, mission gated. So if you go too far into the mission, you miss a previous broadcast. Right. And you're just like, well, what the fuck guys tell, tell me these things. Also, the worst thing they could have ever done, they then do it every single area of this game repeatedly. The fucking, oh, hey, we're just going to randomly dart you and take you into a base to see the guy that's that trying to kill annoying. you. They keep doing it for all yeah. three areas. Like, it never stops. Yeah, I at first I was like, oh, that's cool. I can avoid them. I like that. No, and then the second time can't. I was like, oh, maybe I can't. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, oh, hey, I'm in a plane flying vertically in the oh, air, shit, really? and I just magically got shot by a, a, a hit him with the bliss bullets. So they've already got bullets coated with this drug that somehow will give you the effects of the drug. Like, really? What? What? I, I like the idea of them showing up with that shit and you getting away from it, though. Yeah, but you can't. Like, literally, like... like there's nobody nearby, no threats, no sounds. I'm flying a plane, and all of a sudden fade to black. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I was in the middle of a side mission, and you darted me. They managed to get you to land the plane. <laughs> yeah, so, somehow they abducted me out of midair with their magical cult powers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's definitely something about Far Cry 5 that, like, I just stopped giving a fuck. And that didn't happen yeah, the, before. Yeah, the game part is the best it's ever been. It's the yeah. story part and like the structure of a lot of these missions that they just really fell apart. But I do believe it's partly due to them kind of changing a lot of like their direction midway once they realized like there was some story about them having to make big changes midway through. Okay. And I think that's where they fucked up. Was like they had a more cohesive plan and then decided to make it wacky. Because like the intro, the opening scene is so dark and so serious. Yeah, so is the book. And and then you get off the starter island. And then, oh, hey, we got a goddamn cougar named Peaches. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the bobbleheads of the fucking fat bear with diabetes. We can't give them cheeseburgers anymore. Yeah, in the companion system, I actually didn't really care for. I just used the dog all the time. Yeah. Uh, what's her name? The sniper is the best. Is the best actual character to have huh. because any of those times you come across like the guys flying the planes or the helicopters, mm -hmm. you just click the little button for her on the you know the D pad on the PlayStation controller, whatever you're playing on, and it'll highlight them, and she just. One shot snipes them out of midair. Holy shit! Or like the the abduction wagons that have like the hostages. You just tag yeah. the driver. Oh wow! Snipe. Yeah, like it saves you from having to aim. She just lines up a shot. Bam! Saves you so much effort. Yeah, but at the same time, that's also why I don't like the companion system because I like yeah. doing those things. So yeah, I think, and then a lot of times the companions, you know, they get spotted and you're fucked. Yeah. The dog even gets spotted, no one gives a shit. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's just a goddamn dog. What are you doing sniffing around these drug, you know, factories? Pretty much. But I'm sure I'll get back to it someday. I I love the yeah. Far Cry series, but Pagan Men. I, I had a lot of fun. I know I get a lot of disagreement from certain Jeremy's. But uh <laughs> Uh, that, that, those pesky ones. sort. Yeah, those pesky Jeremy's. Um, yeah, I, I found Voss to be kind of meh. Like, th that story was interesting, but Voss was just like a crazy douchebag. Like, okay, yeah, I guess so. Sure, dude. Yeah, you're crazy. Okay, I get it. Yeah, okay. Like, <laughs> that was pretty much my whole thing with Voss. And he was dead, and I was like, oh, thank God. This fucking psychopath is dead. And and Pagan was just he's a super interesting villain to me because he had 
uh, like the the whole thing with Pagan. I don't, man, I don't want to give up the story. Did you play through four? Yeah, I've played every Far Cry game. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Spoilers. So Pagan's whole thing was like he does want to help your. He genuinely wants to help your character, and you find that out later, or if you you wait through the fifteen minutes at the beginning of the game. But like, he's not a bad dude. He's really not. Yeah. Like, he might rule with an iron fist and whatnot, but those other two dumb motherfuckers aren't going to do any better. <laughs> no, like the the further you get into four, you realize that the two quote unquote good guys that are going to take over the country are dumb as shit, and they're going yeah, they're, to ruin they're everything. Shit. They're going to. They're either going to turn everyone into fucking drug dealers and make no money, or the other guy is just going to be a warlord. So Pagan's really not that bad of a dude. Yeah, at least there will be you know, predictable stability in this country. Exactly. He did bring stability to their country. So I don't, I just found that story to be very interesting, and I love the, the verticality of you know the mountains and everything, and I love Far Cry 4. I'll probably eventually... I might play Far Cry 4 and replay that before I play Far Cry 5. And you know I don't replay games. I've beaten Far Cry 4 <laughs> at least two and a half times. It's one of those games I just occasionally go back for. I love it. So, uh, next up we got something completely different. And I don't know what the fuck this is, Troll. A Hat in Time? Yeah, so A Hat in Time is another one of those games that came around like Ukulele. Oh, okay. It's it's an old school, you know, adventure game based on a character. Oh. A silly world. Now, I liked what I was playing. I enjoyed the things it was presenting. I liked the whole setup. But my issue was once I realized, oh, no, this is one of the old school games like this, like Mario 64. I was just going to where... say, I want a Mario 64. Well, it's... So, like, imagine Banjo Kazooie, but you know, every time you're trying to do something to find one of these hourglasses, which are basically like your power stars. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you find it, you go back to your hub. So, like, you've got to keep making multiple runs in to Mario these areas. So, yeah, but I forgot how much I don't like that. Gotcha. Like, like. You know, it kind of works a lot better because the the levels are far better designed to just get from point A to point B in Mario. And this, you know, has a lot more of the wacky kind of find upgrades to do different things. Like, you find this magic yarn to make different hats. So, like, you just swap out hats to okay. do different powers. It's so like there's, you know, your starter hat has, like, a scanner to find like the hourglass to lead you in the right direction. I found a hat that lets you dash the hat. I think I'm wearing in this lets you throw like yeah. explosive, like cauldron, like potion bottles. Looks like it. But, uh, what was that? Why did you just sit in that chair? So there's a bunch of these areas where you can just sit down or like stand at a thing and it pans the world. Oh. Kind of like it, Gives you a bird's eye view to try to find like collectibles and stuff like that in that area. This looks but, pretty rad. Yeah, it, it was neat. It was that thing I you know bought Humble Bundle for twelve dollars because that was the cheapest I found it to give it a shot, and I played it for like a solid two hours. But then, so as like the story kind of escalates level by level, now a lot of those levels are just like you know different skins of the same area because it's nighttime, it's raining. Like the it like it's repurposing that area for the story. Hmm. The more and more I kept playing that, I was like, "Oh no, some of these secrets are only available in these certain missions, in these right. collectibles, do these things." And I, it was just it just seemed tedious, and I wasn't enjoying enough of the base game to keep playing because there's fifty of those fucking hourglasses, and I only found like seven. Damn. In the time I played. And it was just 
thankfully there's actual like voice acting in this and it's not like ukulele where it's like that awful kind of like because ukulele was like a next level like offender of that yeah because i think i told you before about like the trouser snake and like I told you, like like this is the no- most unnecessary perfect impression of Trouser Snake. Graveyard Keeper does that, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's just it's nonstop. Like like a month or two after I gave up on trying to play ukulele, they put out an update that lets you reduce the like the 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 dialogue sounds it's like. No, give me an option. Just turn that shit off. Like yeah. it, it doesn't benefit anything. I just got really like, excited because I just realized what I'm actually gonna be playing tomorrow. Staxel. <laughs> oh yeah, I gave you that code for Staxel. But uh, I was like, I remember when I said shit about you know ukulele and a guy's like, yeah, but that's how they did that in Banjo Kazooie, and I was like. It was never acceptable then. <laughs> you were just dumb and young. Like <laughs> I didn't I never got into Banjo Kazooie, but I did Mario 64. Yeah. Well, because Mario 64 was a well made game. <laughs> Damn, shots fired. No, but I played both Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie. Like they're they're good games, but it's just you know, there were times where I remember literally by the time I got like halfway through Banjo Kazooie. I would grab like my TV remote and hit mute when people started talking. You know what platformer I got really into? Maybe this is an obscure game. Uh, Gex Enter the Gecko. Uh, yeah, I know. I because I, I, there's a thing that's always stuck in my head from that stupid game. Is you know you find like the VHS tapes and. They have all these like weird like references to things. Yeah, and I found one of them, and like the audio that played is like, and, and now back to a new episode of Touched by an Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> like that was the name of the fake TV show. Oh my god! Instead of Touched by an Angel, it was Touched by an Uncle. Oh man, I gotta find gameplay for this thing. It's terrible. That game was bad. No, all the Gex games are bad. Not. At least, you know, when, when when we were at the age when Gex came out, like, it was kind of funny for, like, teenagers. Oh, that is not the Gex I played. What is the one where he's a super a- secret agent? Yes, yeah, Gex under the Gecko. It doesn't look like that. No, there's that. different levels where he has different outfits. Oh, wait. I may have played Deep Cover Gecko. Yeah! Hold on. Well, he has like a spy outfit on and Enter the Gecko. But Enter the Gecko was levels based on like parodies of other things. It was like a bad version of Conquer's Bad Fur Day. It was a good version of Conquer's Bad Fur Day. No, I think Deep Cover Gecko is the one I played. I guess I never played Enter the Gecko. This is the one I had. This game was awesome. Did you ever play this one? The one I have on screen right now? I think I did. There's my pool for... I think it's an obscure game. It's a fairly obscure game. Yeah, this one, he it references the different things. There's like a Santa level. There's a this is the vampire level. Um, shit. Yeah, I think there's a secret agent level. I cannot remember. I guess we can skip through this video. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there's a war level. And there's, like, really crude jokes in it. Yeah, like I said, with the touch by an uncle joke. Yeah. (laughs) I don't remember if I ever beat this. Nope! I don't know what this is. Yeah. (laughs) I never beat this game. (laughs) Like, I I was like, oh, shit, they're, like, in, like, mecha suits. Like, what? His girlfriend. What is, yeah. There's a there's a lady who obviously did like Cinemax porn. Yeah, right. <laughs> Mythology <laughs> Network. Yeah, there was no penetration there. Dip the lizard. Yes, yeah, you should like that. Ooh. 
Yeah, so I, I love this game. Jack loves Jill. <laughs> Best, what does it say? Best area. I don't know. Yeah, there's just little crude jokes like that in the game. I don't know. I yeah. got a kick out of that game, but I, I also like didn't know any better. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> that's yeah. the issue with nostalgia. Yeah. Is, <laughs> it's opinions formed when you were stupid. Pretty much. Yeah, I'm not, not big on nostalgia at all. But that yeah. being said, this Hat and Time game does look pretty rad. Yeah, it, it it's a cool game. I mean, it's just, man, you just got to know what you're getting into. Like, I, I was not expecting it to be level based, and that just like threw all my momentum off. I was like, oh no, so, I don't want to keep going in and out of these areas. I just want to explore this little world. As someone that uh wants to replay Mario 64, should I just get this? Uh, if you want to be disappointed. Oh. Because, like I said, Mario 64 is, like, all about, you know, like, the 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 skill of platforming. This one has way more, like, oh, they're horseshit you gotta keep up with. Okay. Because, like I said, you're, you've got, like, the little umbrella you beat people with. That's your melee weapon. You're just trying to find these little hourglasses, and once you get it, you know, you go back to your time ship. So I guess you're and then you find new hats. Okay. It's just like it's 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 a it's an above average game. Had this come I out in the sixty four era, would it have been a quote unquote better game or great game? It it like in that era, it would have been like one of the ones people still talk about. Yeah. This is the thing. But now people just... need to make games like this, but with modern sensibilities. Well, this has some of them, like it, like yeah. it, but it's still like just that. Man, I don't know. Like it was just, I was just getting annoyed loading back into a like, different random area of that same map you saw me in. Yeah, and then trying to figure out, okay, what's the gimmick for this one? Because you can just you know mainline straight to the hourglass and be done with go that, back, and, right? And go back to your ship and have to go back to the place. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I might I might actually get this. Yeah, I mean it's it's something I'd recommend people try cuz it goes on sale fairly cheap. I see it regularly, you know, under 20 bucks. So I think it was only 30 when it launched originally. Cuz like I've watched videos of ukulele and that I have no interest in that. Yeah, ukulele I would honestly probably play more than this, you know, since now I can, you know, shut up the dialogue. <laughs> right. I am super interested in this. Alright, well, let's see what we have next. Uh, I'm great at segues, aren't I? <laughs> so We've this... got the body of a mall cop. Let's go... <laughs> We're gonna call him Jake Ways. Jacob Ways. Yeah. Hot Ways. I don't know. Anyways... You play Golf Story. Yeah, I've gotten actually, pretty deep into Golf Story. Yeah, I'm actually really interested in this game. Well, the thing, you know, I knew and then just kind of, you know, summarily forgot about was how much of kind of like an RPG this really is. So you have stats as far and whatnot? As, yeah, you have stats you level up. Like, I don't know if I do it here in this spot you click to, but in your stats like the one skill you can kind of like pull back on is like your power like the max yardage you can hit okay but by leveling up your power it kind of fucks up your other four stats like your you know your accuracy you know your the angle of your attack your rpm as far as like the spin you know whether or not you slice more right so you you permanently spend points to adjust those back to where they you want them to be. Because, you know, the more powerful you get, the less control you have. Mm -hmm. So then you're kind of like just spending a few points in power, spend a point here and there to get those things back to where they should be. Uh, there's a lot of cool parts of this game of different weird ways kind of like yoku's island 
of like you're exploring the world, you know, as like a fucking dung beetle stuck to a ball. Yeah. Being flung around by pinball. Like you kind of do a lot of your problem solving with golf balls. Huh. So like there will be barrels you can just smash with a line drive to break it to get the loot out of them. There will be like random little holes. I have like a rainbow ring. You throw, they're just on the map. You shoot a ball okay. out there and hit into it. It gives you like a bonus of like money or XP. Is it open world? Yeah. Well, each one of these little levels, these golf courses, you know, you freely roam around and, ex- and explore. Uh, yeah, there's all sorts of weird things. Like the very beginning golf course you start at. As soon as you walk in, there's these guys talking about I switch over a fence. If you hit a shot of the button and you don't figure out what it is, it wasn't until like a few hours later that I finally noticed that there were as there was another switch in another corner of the map, another switch here, and a switch behind the building that this all unlocked. And he went in there and it was like a secret, you know golf experiment facility of them trying to make a better putter. Huh. So it was kind of just like, you know, finding like a secret or like a power weapon in a final fantasy almost. Can you switch out your putters and your drivers and all that? Yeah. So like every one of these courses has um, a pro shop that you okay. unlock. So like sometimes you got to do, like little side quests for some of these characters to meet your criteria to then open up the next area to open up the course, to be able to play a full game. That's the part that starts to drag is when you have to actually play the, the full nine holes of golf. Like the, the short quest stuff of like, Oh, Hey, chip a shot over here and land on this Island. Yeah. Yeah you know, against the wind and bounce it off the back of a turtle and other shit. Like, you know, the weird stuff of, you know, puzzle solving with golf, I enjoyed way more than just, okay, now you have to sit down and play a game of golf. You see, now you're looking at these circles. Yeah, the that's the these? turtles. Oh. You, you just fucking toss that ball in there. Oh, and shit. if it's within that ring, it'll, you know, oh, cue up okay. the turtle. And you can use those to maybe bounce, you know, to a better area. This particular golf game that's happening is uh, the the black gentleman and the lady in the skirt are trainers. And you're being pitted against one of these other, you know, people that was being trained. And so the initial shot is being hit by the trainers. And the old black guy is just like, crap. Like, he's old and doesn't care anymore. <laughs> so a lot of his opening shots, you know, screw you over. And okay. then you're trying to recover from there in this particular challenge. Uh, there's a there's a map called Cheeky Beak Peak. Well, Cheeky like these Beak? birds. If you shoot the ball into, like, the little ring, the bird flies over, picks up the ball, and drops it into a spot. So sometimes the bird throws it into like a sand bunker. Some of the birds actually are beneficial. There's all these weird little elements and stories and characters. Like it's 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 amusing and entertaining. But yeah, the actual golf part is starting to drag on me. Yeah, I I like golf games. But I don't know if I like them enough to play like an RPG. But also, I don't know because I've never played one. <laughs> yeah, it's such a weird, you know, game because it is kind of like a standalone. I don't know of any other yeah. story based golf games. Uh, I think the Mario golf game, not the Switch one, but the ones before did. Yeah. yeah this well, is, there isn't this one weird. for the Switch. Oh, tennis. I meant tennis. No, tennis had the RPG stuff. I don't know if the golf did. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, like I said, like, when you kind of complete, like, all the stuff to hit the next part of, like, the story in these areas, it all basically accumulates in you playing a full round of the 
the golf and it's like, man, that part's wearing thin. Like all the crazy shit I was still enjoying. But then when you just got to really sit down and play, you know, nine holes of golf. Yeah. That was starting to wear thin. Now it is a great game to just start and stop. This is the first time I actually like played my switch out of the dock. I took it to work one day just to try it out. Yeah. Because this game is essentially turn based. Because you yeah, know that's you why can I just want it. yeah you can just queue up your shot and choose when you want to shoot. As long as you don't start the actual swing, you can you know back up, reposition, switch clubs, you know add topspin, backspin, curve it a little bit by hitting the ball at a different corner. You know, it's a, it's a good start and stop game. But I'm playing it in probably in larger chunks than I should, and it's starting to wear on me. Yeah. So I might just, you know, slowly, you know, chip away at finishing it because I'm pretty close to the end. How long? So I kind of want to see what happens with the pro golf. Like you're trying to become a pro golfer. Yeah. About how long is it? Do you know? I mean, I've probably put eight hours into it now. And it's probably another like four or five hours. Okay. Yeah, so you are increasing stats and like switching out your gear and all that. Yeah, so like each one of these areas has a pro shop. And so like this Bermuda Isles is a lot of water because it's little islands. You can unlock these uh the woods, you know, the big clubs to you know hit the ball further. Mm-hmm. You unlock a set that are called skimming woods. So, like, if you like shoot it over the water, it'll bounce based on how fast it's going. Okay. So you can actually, you know, what would have been you just hitting the water and you know failing, you can like skip it over the water a few times, like you're throwing rocks out in the lake. Okay, now you're increasing the stats. Yeah. So, like you see, every time I upgrade power, it fucks up these other four. Yeah. So then you kind of got to go back in and spend a point here and there to balance those back out. Cause I had let it alone one time and just spent like two or three runs of leveling up, just increasing power. Cause there's a challenge I had to try to like out drive a guy at one of the driving ranges. Okay. And even though I was hitting it perfect, like I was like super unreliable. Like I was slicing so hard, like, like the those stats were actually making a pretty big notice. Damn. You know, once they get like ridiculously out of there. Uh but yeah, man, I, I like some of the some of the characters, some of the writing. It's silly. It's you know, comedic. But man, I guess I don't recommend playing it in big chunks. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like something I would play and play in little bursts. But that's pretty much how I play games. So you also played you play so much shit. Not shit yeah. games. <laughs> you also played uh Donut County. Pulling that up now. Which looks yeah, like freaking I, awesome. I'm gonna have to get this for PC. Yeah, like I said, it's it's on PC, it's on iOS, it's on PlayStation, because that's where I played it. It, I mean, I played through both this and Dead Living Zombies like back to back in one night. Yeah, because each were both just under two hours. <clears throat> so yeah, like this is kind of part puzzle game, and then once you kind of like solve the puzzle, and then transitions more into like a Katamari style. Right. Like it's doing. So that. once you once you kind of clear the big puzzle, your hole gets big enough to just start trying to eat up everything on the map. So uh, you're playing from the perspective of BK, the raccoon. Okay. He's like, he runs a donut shop. Oh, yeah, this, the bunnies start fucking in the hole. (laughs) Apparently. And that adds more matter to make the hole larger. But yeah, so he's running a donut shop. And he's controlling this app on his phone to send donuts to these people that order it. Like, you know, like they ordered an Uber. Okay. They think they're going to get an actual donut, you know, a nice snack sent to their home. But then you just send this little thing to just steal all their shit, essentially. (laughs) 
This like it tells a really well written story. Like the dialogue between like the one human character I'm aware of in the game. Yeah. Uh, she's you know BK's friend, and you know you, like so you see most of her like dialogue, but then you're actually controlling BK to do the like all the the actual whole stuff. Yeah. They had some puzzle stuff later on of. Like one of the areas, there's snakes, and there's a snake watch. So then you find one of the snakes, you free it out of the cage, and the tail sticking out of the hole, and you're using that to like press buttons to then like break this machine to free all the other snakes to then start eating more snakes and eat the whole like outpost and all this other stuff. You get like a catapult to throw shit back out of the hole. Uh, but cool. yeah, yeah, it's it's fun, man. It's super chill. Like the music's great as a gigantic, you know, music dork. Music's great. I love uh, at the end of all these levels, like all the shit you collect gets added to the Trashopedia. Wow, why is it so big? <laughs> <laughs> and all the writing on these is yeah. great. Like, and uh, like there's a campfire, and it's like. You know, this is an old version. This is this is an olden times version of a TV, like because <laughs> they had no TV, so they just sit by a campfire and look around. You can step on this if you hate dirt. Yeah, clearly designed by aliens. That is, have a garbage day. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap, dude! This is a game that's meant for Switch. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's very short. And the guy who made this, it took him like six years to finish it. But, you know, he wasn't like full time working on it. Like, he kind of had the idea. He came up with uh, the idea for the game at a game jam based on like a a joke essentially from Peter Molyneux. Yeah. And then he said, well, no, we could actually make that into a game. He liked what he was doing. And started to make it into a real thing, but he was working on other projects for other companies. And then Annapurna is the publisher for this that kind of came in, threw some money at him to get him to complete the project. But then it still took him like an, a year and a half. Hmm. Oh, and this is what I've seen. This little bit with the trailer. Yeah, I, I like the idea that... Um. One of these areas, there's like some corn, and like you shake the corn loose, and you start setting stuff on fire, and then the corn pops in a popcorn and baits the bird over to try to eat it. <laughs> so then you then pull like the the you know the the bird into your nest. This one you just had to start setting shit on fire with oh, the damn. coals. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to go back. The bird tosses another coal. And you just start setting everything on fire until these trees break down into smaller parts for you to eat. Meanwhile, little the little pepper character is just hanging out up there. Yeah, he's just chilling. Like, I love the idea of you coming into these areas and the people that you know you're pulling into the hole that are mad at you. Because in between every level, you're hitting like these interstitials. These characters like, like what the hell, BK? You ruined everything. He's like, did I really though? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Like, yeah, he's he's like such an asshole, but he's great. Like, I love that there's a, a lot of occasions where you're texting back and forth with people. Okay. And one of the achievements, trophies, is to, like, send the duck emote. Like, there's just, like, an emoji of a duck. And you got to send it a hundred times to people. So then you just have just one point in one of these things, you just smash the button a bunch until it pops up. But you just see the duck and it just makes a quack. <laughs> and occasionally they respond by sending a duck back or have a little quip. Something like that. Uh but yeah like the text conversations are great as far as them actually sounding like friends that, you know, are kind of tired of each other's shit. But yeah. you know they you know they love each other. <laughs> This looks 
pretty great. Yeah, it looks like yeah, it's only it, on Windows, Mac, and iOS and PlayStation. Yeah. But man, it's 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 like five dollars on iOS, like twelve dollars yeah. everywhere else. The creator said it's possible for it to be on Switch. Yeah, there's no exclusivity deal. Why is it on Xbox? God damn it. Oh. Maybe the guy just doesn't like Xbox. Oh, he's an asshole mess for his <laughs> game now. I love, <laughs> I love the, the, the the one for the, the tablet there. Pour water in this and scream. <laughs> <laughs> Folds up when you least expect it. Yeah. Uh so like the whole thing is like these raccoons just treat everything as trash. Yeah. And like the story is kind of like this odd parable about like gentrification. Yeah. Of how the raccoons came in this neighborhood and started like ruining everything. Right. It's great, man. I I kind of want to go back and play through it and get the little platinum trophy cuz it's not long. Like if it took me like an hour and like 45 minutes to beat it once, it's maybe another hour to 100% everything. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to get that. I'll probably just get it on PC. Just play through it. So, and just to add to the diversity of all the stuff you've been playing this week, you also played The Messenger. Yeah, man. Th- this this game, as soon as I saw it in the first trailer, I was like, I need this in my life. Now, is this a Metroidvania? Yeah, well, it's essentially... It, it it's essentially it's like old school like Ninja Gaiden level based, and then you hit a point where the story opens up, and you see the real like hook to this game is you travel forward in time, and then it switches from this eight bit Nintendo style to sixteen bit NES Super Nintendo style. That's right. Okay. So you spend a bit of time you know, swapping through time zones to the point to where then you have these portals that open up these rifts in all these levels. So then part of the Metroidvania stuff comes in where to get to some of these secret areas, you have to go in the right pattern to be in the right time to find these items, to talk to these people. Right to get through these areas because, you know, the world's changed, you know, over 500 years, I think is the, the, the time difference there. Yeah. So there's like an area where the bridge is collapsed, but if you go back in time, the bridge is still there. Right. Or you, the thing I just wrapped up was like, there was a, a plant that was growing that these two guys were waiting to add into their food to get more get more powerful to be stronger. And you come back there, you know, after they're a boss fight, but you know, they're cool dudes. Like I love that all the boss fights essentially are just like misunderstandings. Oh shit. <laughs> so like there's like this giant golem guy. Like you uh you fight the golem and you turn to find out that this is just like the spirit that was digging in these tunnels for like the past, like thousands of years. And he just didn't see you there and accidentally tried to step on you. And then you fought him and then he defended himself. Cause he didn't know like why you were attacking him. <laughs> so you break this guy's golem and he's just fucking sad. <laughs> he's like, yeah, no, yeah, no, no problem. No problem. And as soon as you like jump in like the little gust of wind and fly up out of the area, you see this little floating, like spirit face, just, just fucking start crying. Like, <laughs> he's so disheartened and sad. Like, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. This doesn't look like a game with that kind of sense of humor, but that's awesome. Oh, yeah, it's all silly. Like, the shopkeep here, like, he has, like, in the initial intro of you being stuck in the 8-bit thing before you know, like, it's going to transition, like, you see the shopkeep and the checkpoint before basically every room that's going to have a boss fight. And to the point to where, like, you know, you see your character say, well, I mean, I just saw, like, symmetrical lanterns, gear spot, 
No enemies, short room. I just assume there's going to be a boss fight after this. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, like this little spot right here. You talk to the guy and he gives you like commentary on like the the boss on uh the the area. You can ask him if he's got any actual stories. And he's got like some actual like fairy tales and you know like the boy who cried wolf kind of scenarios. Right. Stories that are kind of based on like morals or slowly hinting at things, even though the story's dumb. And you come across later, like the actual info, like he's hinting at something. But most of the times they're just silly. Yeah. And he's just kind of an asshole. So are you able to switch between 16 and 8 bit at will? No, okay. you have to, you have to find like the portals. Gotcha. Like this section here, I think was when I started, and you're playing for a while before you go forward in time. Nope, didn't go forward in time. Yeah, like you'll see, like these, like straight up, like portals out of portal rifts that are just like as soon as you walk through. I don't think there's any of those in this, unfortunately. Okay. Well, you have failed this podcast. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I forgot <laughs> which clip to send you. I uploaded the wrong thing. But yeah, it transitions like from you know like five channel NES audio to like eight channel Super Nintendo. So like the music changes, the pixel art changes. So you go from being like old school Ninja Guy, Ninja Guy to a dude with a cool fucking cape and a hat, and the music you know goes to higher quality. Uh, real cool feature is like when you go underwater, the the sound gets kind of muted to right. sound like you're below something. So then there's like a third version of all these audio tracks. It's fucking hard. Like it, it really is a love letter to those old platformer Ninja Gaiden style games. Because man, find... like. Hmm? It's not like Guacamelee, where like the real hard stuff is all the side content. This game is just kind of hard, and then the side content's harder. Yeah, see, this is the uh, old school version, right? Little eight bit guy. Yeah, he's got a hat on. Yeah, that's the that's the Super Nintendo. Yeah, sixteen bit. Well, yeah. but yeah, so like. There's all these different kind of abilities you start to unlock. So there are areas where if you, you know, get good, kid, you can pretty much stay off of the ground because you can attack. So, like, basically, if you attack somebody, like, you see, like, the little lines pop up under his feet. That's his uh, cloud cloud jump or something like that is what it's yeah. called. So, basically, there is no double jump, but if you hit something with your sword... It recharges your jump. Okay. So you can unlock an ability to smack the enemy projectiles. Yeah. And that recharges it. You get like this like squirrel suit to glide. So then you can like unlock an attack to swing down. So then it's almost like Shovel Knight where you're just bouncing off of the top of things. Okay. And then you recharge your jump. So you glide, smack something, jump, glide again. Hook shot over to something, stick to the wall, climb up, bounce back and forth. I mean, it gets super hardcore platformy later on. Yeah, it looks like one that I might enjoy. I don't know. It doesn't. It, look, uh, it doesn't look super hard to me. Like it looks difficult, but well, not like crazy hard. Like all. No, it. like it's it's some of the side stuff gets ridiculous, but like. The base level stays, you know, hard mode for the sure. most part. Not ridiculous. Like, like it requires a lot of platforming skill sure. to get through some basic areas sometimes. I'm going to have to check that out. Everything should have a demo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the messenger is 20 bucks. Yeah. So it's not a big investment. I would probably wait for it to go on sale great. for myself. So, uh, I mean, that's pretty much what we've been playing this week. I think next week I'm going to be playing Staxel. 
I don't know when I'm going to start Axiom Verge. I feel like I want to get further into Dead Cells before I start anything like that. I pretty much got it because it was on sale. Yeah, I thought, was it like nine bucks? Yeah. I, and I, I passed up on Yoku's Island to get it. But Axiom Verge like something I would enjoy a lot more. Yeah, Yoku's is just weird. And if you yeah. don't like the pinball part, it you know wears its welcome out pretty fast. I'm going to get it eventually. It will just like, hey, Axiom Verge, I know I'm going to like that. Yeah. Get more out of it. It's good stuff. So now we are going to watch a shitload of trailers from PAX 18, 2018. PAX West, 2018. There, I got there eventually. Uh, this one you were super excited about, Streets of Rage 4, which, yeah, I'm excited about it, too. Yeah, Streets well, this of Rage. actually just popped up randomly unrelated to PAX. Like, this happened, like, the day or two before. I thought it was related to PAX. I think I saw it in the title, too. Maybe well, they're... they, uh, they yeah. had a trailer they showed at PAX. So, like, they just announced this on Twitter. Okay. And then they've also took it to PAX. Gotcha. So I think there's an actual like demo that people are able to play at PAX. They they can try stuff out. That's awesome. So yeah, like the craziest thing I didn't expect. Well, one that Streets of Rage Four would exist ever. Yeah, you're you're a big the last Rage one. fan, right? Yeah. Well, I've always been a big brawler guy. Like I loved those games back then. Like I mentioned, Fighting Force. I think last podcast because I think we randomly talked about Brawlers. Yeah. Last time, and I told you about Fighting Force, which was awful. Like, well, it was it was cool, but it was super short. They, it was one of those genres that died off once they realized they could do more, and people were expecting games that weren't just going to be over in two hours. But yeah, uh, Streets of Rage Four. Like I said, the last one was on the Sega. Journey. Like, they have not made another Streets of Rage since, like, 1994. Yeah. I can't find uh, any gameplay. There's one video that says gameplay, but it's from nine months ago. Yeah, the well, that trailer has some gameplay in there in the middle, but it's, like, 15 seconds. Uh, what the hell? Really? Uh, yeah, the craziest thing to me is that immediately, I never expected as many people in the world to know Yuzo Koshiro by name. Yeah. He's the guy who made the music for a lot of the Sega classics. He made, you know, the Sonic music. He made the music for the Streets of Rage. And like I posted in the Discord, like he's one of those guys where like if he ever, you know, he's a 50 something year old man now. When he passes away, dude, I'm going to be fucking destroyed. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, there is like, yeah, like four seconds of gameplay in this. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's not much. Uh, but yeah, man, like the the series has been weird because, like, like if you ever played the first Streets of Rage, like you're the two characters you see here. They're cops going in and solving shit with yeah. their fists. So like this guy is has a straight up like fire punch like you know, Ryu from Street Fighter. And this girl has, like, the guile, like, backflip kick. <laughs> yeah. Was, was yeah, there the first Streets one... of Rage Street Fighter crossover? Or am I thinking of something else? No, well, there was Final Fight. Okay. Which was, like, Fatal Fury and Final Fight were the same characters. One was a fighting game, one was, like, a brawler. Uh, the the brawler was never good. Yeah. Fuck it. Fucking at me if you disagree. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the the fighting game was cool. It I uh, the the art the animation. Yeah. Was always next level comparatively. I've definitely so this must, played this, is, this. Yeah, this is Streets of Rage one. Yeah. I immediately could tell you this is one. Like. Well, it looks uh, like it's a different dude though. Yeah, that's well. No, this might be two then, because two has this guy. Uh, there's a uh, the kid on roller skates. This I don't is know, new. like 
Yeah, because the first was just those those two characters, and like you have like a a special ability you can call in where like a cop car cop cars roll up and like fire artillery at your enemies. Like it's it's weird shit, man. Yeah, and then like the uh, the second one adds like three two other characters, and a third one you can unlock outside of that has the big like bulky wrestler guy and the kid on the skates was always my favorite. Yeah. This is just this was such a good old school beat 'em up game. Yeah. I I hope that 4 is really good. I would love to play that. Well, 4 like you see like the art, like the the actual animation and art just looks yeah. amazing. Yeah. But it's the same group of people that did that Wonder Boy remake. Is that the animal one? And the Dragon's Trap, you know, yeah, the yeah, the one where you change into animals. Yeah, okay, yeah, we talked about that in the Gamescom one. Yeah, because they announced that Monster Boy, which is kind of like a spiritual successor to it. Okay. By a different studio, but that, whatever that lizard something or whatever company, they're the company that does the art. I love this dude just straight cheesing all these people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was what? just watching that. I was like, what an asshole. He's just straight, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like just tossing people. You could do that back in the day, though. Yeah. Oh, but, uh, boy. Okay. Yeah, so the same artist, the same lead artist, the same team is like making like all the visual assets from what I can tell. And I believe it's the other company that's doing the, uh, the actual game part. Because there's two studios working on Streets of Rage 4. But yeah, when I said Yuzo Koshiro, it's like, the only two things I saw people responding is, hey, it's a, hey, Streets of Rage 4 is a thing, and is Yuzo Koshiro doing the music? Well, they can't confirm anything. It was like, well, then fuck this game, because the music <laughs> was the only thing that was worthwhile. You know, like, because <laughs> that, that's the, I, well, I mean, to be fair, like, those games are fun, but the reason why they stick out is, because that music was just so yeah. To see the 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 sound chip, which I come to find out years later, that the, the actual sound processor chip was different in certain batches of Sega Genesis. Right. So then, certain ones, the music was way better than certain other ones, and I happen to get lucky and have one of the good ones. Nice. Because I, I looked up like the, the production batch models yeah. in time and my Genesis I had forever was the first batch of the Sonic Two bundles. And those are right before they had like the cutoff, I wanna say. Like <laughs> I forget, but so much of the Genesis to me, I always remember the music. Like, uh, last time Bob was on here, he asked me about, you know, Sonic Mania. Right. Because I told him I had bought that Encore DLC for the Sonic Mania Plus or whatever. Yeah. I was like, I told him, like, I bought that for the music. Like, I only came here because these games are average at best. Although Sonic Mania does way better than any of the, pretty much any of the other Sonic games ever did. But it's still a Sonic game at the end of the day. Yeah. As a guy who's loved Sonic for 30 years, <laughs> like I'm not gonna defend Sonic and say it's a great game. Like, no, it's it's an okay game with amazing music. Sure, yeah, I'll agree with that. Mario's so, yeah, an amazing was, game with amazing music. Yeah. Well, depending on the game. Don't at me, Sega fanboys. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the Mario's dip. I'm talking no, about Super but... Mario Brothers. Pretty much any time yeah. I refer to Mario, I'm talking about Super Mario Brothers. But yeah, man, I I can't I can't wait to see what that game is because apparently it's fairly soon, huh. like it's next year. Okay, like early next year, I want to say. Yeah, I'll play that. And I, uh, do beat em dot up, em, are beat 'em ups even a thing anymore? Well, like last episode. We talked about, you know, some of the games that are lost to time, essentially. And I mentioned, you know, 
Guacamelee is kind of a beat em up, but it's like 2D Metroid style. So it kind of has like beat em up mechanics, but yeah. the Metroid game. But uh, the Scott Pilgrim versus the World game yes. made by Wake Forward that you can't buy anymore. I think that's been delisted from all the stores. Hey, even Streets of Rogue, which is like a, supposed to be a beat em up roguelite. That's even, I was gonna like, say, I, totally different. Yeah, well, that's I think Streets of Rogue, the company that made that, is the guy is working on the game part, not the art part for Streets of Rage. Oh wow! I I I think that's like the only game that company had to their list. Let's see, Streets of Rogue. Made by uh, oh, I missed it. Made by publisher developer Matt Dabrowski. It's just one dude, apparently. Well, never mind. So, that, that I think that guy's doing something else then. Yeah. yeah. I, I I heard his name mentioned, or that game mentioned in a similar conversation at one point. I always look up Streets of Rage Four. Yeah, there, I don't. I can't think of any Scott Pilgrim, but there's none of those weird camera angle, like how to walk wherever you want in your lane kind of beat 'em up games anymore. Uh there was this weird. Like, there's been indie games that have done it. Like, there was a game I tried out a while back that I got free on PlayStation Plus called uh, 99 Vitas. Vitas. Like lives, not Vita Vida. Like it's, it's a, it's a, it's this weird like retro beat 'em up made by Brazilians set in the slums of Brazil. Huh. Let's see, uh, V I D A S. A hundred twenty eight bit Dreamcast. It looks like it's the developer. What no. Now known as Overworks. I cannot find any damn information on this. Well, if you go to dot .emu's website, it has like the information. Okay, well, fuck it. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah the the brawler I mainly played was uh, Golden Axe. It was so fucking yeah, good. Gold, Golden Axe is fucking great. Yeah. I actually recently went back and played Golden Axe with my brother. That is so good. But yeah, we mentioned dot em, dot mu last time as well because they're also the people behind Windjammers. Okay. So when they announced Windjammers two at Gamescom, then now that's a that's a game from like even older. I would or at the same age as Streets yeah. of Rage. Yeah, there's some old <laughs> games that they could definitely bring back. Fucking Super Ghouls and Ghosts. That's what I want. Super Ghosts and Goblins. Because of something and something. <laughs> the, with um, Arthur. Yeah. Super Ghosts and Goblins, I, right? I think that uh, I, that might be a Konami or Capcom. Uh, That's Capcom because he's in Marvel vs. Capcom. He's he's my main. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. God, I love that game. I so, think the last one they made of those was on like the PSP or Vita. Are we just going to, like, any day now, Nintendo's just going to be like, here's our online service? <laughs> it's well, fucking it's September. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's shit or get off the pot time, Nintendo. Tell us what the fuck this is. This, I hope, dude... My dream scenario with that, and we're not going to get too far into this because we still got more trailers, is we just get a list of like Super Mario, Star Fox, Street Fighter, you know, stuff like that. Just a list of like some Super Nintendo games, Mario. Well, 64. they've only announced NES games. I know it's the only ones they've said that'll ever be there. I, there's got to be more. I gotta. And I gotta. Also, believe. they'd have to pay to put like games that aren't theirs on there. So they couldn't put Street Fighter unless they paid Capcom. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. They couldn't put Castlevania on there unless they paid Konami. <laughs> I mean, shit. 
if it, if it was just, you know, Nintendo games. Put Super Mario Brothers and Super Mario 64 on there, you're going to get a shitload of subscriptions. And I'm going to pay the 20 bucks for a year, because that's a great well, deal. I mean, I, I'm just going to pay it just because. Yeah. It's like, I, I know if I get Smash, I want to play it online. Yeah. And there's a lot of people complaining that Nintendo's charging for online play, but it's like, if it's fucking 20 bucks. Like, shut up. <laughs> I gotta imagine they gotta pay for like inf- infrastructure and shit, but it's whatever. Let's keep going with the trailers. Because this one yeah. is was sitting on, over here and I've been super interested in it. It's Damn View, built from nothing. Yeah. Some kind of so, urban simulator or something, rather? It, yeah, like, it's... You're just a guy in this world of just anthropomorphic animals... And you're living in like a, essentially like this, you know, fucking animal farm version of Detroit. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting strong Wolves Among Us vibe. But yeah, like you just are a person, you know, living in this world. So they said it was just like, like IGN's like title on the video is like the most depressing Stardew Valley. Oh, wow. So there are just like basic like life tasks you do. Like at one point in like their gameplay demo video, the guy that they saw was yeah working at a laundromat. So you literally go up to the laundromat, get the laundry out, move it from the washer to the dryer. <laughs> you uh you know run the counter, sell people shit. There's an underground fight club there. There's shit going on at school and out in the streets. Yeah, it's just this super cool looking game that. I just really need to know what it is. Yeah, I don't know about that now. <laughs> that looks too depressing. I thought Graveyard yeah, well, Keeper was depressing. Fuck. Well, Graveyard Keeper is just weird. This yeah. is you actively doing horrible things to people, potentially. Like, you're choosing to beat up this this guy and steal his wallet instead of going back to your job at the laundromat. <laughs> oh, I guess I just prefer more upbeat games where you're nice to people. Party Heart 2 looks great. <laughs> <laughs> the exact opposite of everything we just said. <laughs> uh, I did. I love playing Party Heart, though. <laughs> it's such a fucking wacky-ass Hitman clone. Yeah. What in the fuck is happening? Are you driving a motorcycle? <laughs> but I also well, love... Fire out of the ass, yeah. yeah. I also love the premise of it is like he's fucking sick and tired of all the noise. <laughs> yeah. He becomes a serial killer just because he's tired of, you know, people partying too loud. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, I just wanted to sleep, you assholes. I gave you a chance to turn your music down. I have the, like, party tycoon simulator. I haven't played it. They came out with some kind of simulator one or tycoon type thing. It was like it was free, or I got it for free for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, I'll I'll play more Party Hard. I'm totally okay with that. Uh, that's also one of those games I enjoy watching a lot. Yeah. And, I uh, uh, hmm? it, it it reminded me I was gonna say of Serial Cleaner. Did you ever check that one out? No, I want to. I keep seeing it. it's on sale all the time on the Switch. I, it's on sale all the time. I think it. At one point, was in the Game Pass. Oh, it might be. You're right. I think they also gave it away in that Twitch Prime month. Oh, I'll have to check. Yeah, you might have it in just like your Twitch library. Yeah, that way I can at least try it out before I buy it on Switch. Yeah, that yeah, looks that like something was, I would enjoy. That's part that of your just like that's like the, the reverse whole, of party. Yeah, hard. you're cleaning <laughs> up the dead bodies and hiding the evidence from the cops. Yeah, yeah, but it is that same kind of style. <laughs> well, you're hiding. Yeah, you're hiding it from the cops because you're like the mob's cleaner. Yeah, you're you're, you're like the mob calls you while yeah. you're like you're living with your mom, <laughs> and so like your mom's watching TV and she's like, "Honey, there's the phone for you." And you go over, guy, give me like the cryptic message to go clean something up. Yeah, and you're, like you're throwing bodies to alligators or out the windows of a skyscraper. <laughs> I, th- I think I do have that on Twitch because I think it's going to be part of uh, Project 168. 
I but yeah, that 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 game's cool. It's more of a puzzle game. Yeah. Than like just finding the right pattern of stabbing people to death <laughs> in terrible ways. Yeah. So this game here, I have no idea what this is, but it looks like a fucking Souls game. Hellpoint. See, we walk through the archway. What is that? To build a great city in the stars. Okay. I don't know what this is. This looks interesting. The hell? Do you know what this is? I have no idea. I I don't remember watching this. It's some kind of sci-fi fantasy? That's pretty cool. Yeah. Hopefully it's not like too human. And it's bitterly disappointing. (laughs) Which one was too human? It was a Silicon Knights uh, third-person action RPG and, like, weird futuristic North mythology. Huh. What in the world is this? But then it got, like, delayed forever. And then they tried to sue Epic Games. What? Why? Well, because they were making on the Unreal Engine. Yeah. And I guess they didn't pay the right licensing rights to get all the stuff. Oh, damn. So so they had to, like, change, like, versions of their Unreal Engine midway through development and all this other horse shit. Like, like they basically were trying to say Epic Games held shit out on them. <laughs> and then they lost the court case. Oh, okay. I see how you can make that comparison. Yeah. Sounds like a really bad Devil May Cry. Yeah, well, it was, like, a loot RPG. It was, huh. th- this game was more like Diablo as far as like you finding loot and upgrading your character. This looks dumb as hell. Yeah, it was not good. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> I don't know if that counts as your obscure game of the week, but it looks terrible. Uh, I was going to say, you want to know my real obscure game? Oh, here we go. It, it, res- it results uh, from kind of like the look and the kind of like the activities of Party Hard. Okay. Uh, the Haunting. What console is that on? It's a Sega Genesis game. Oh, wait, no. So the whole point of this game was you're a ghost and you're possessing shit in this house to try to scare the family out. Huh. And it is you just kind of like walking around finding like the right combination of things to do to scare this person, scare that person. So like you are just kind of like walking around in like that pixel style oh God. of party hard doing weird shit. I would be terrified <laughs> of that. Yeah. Get out. Hey, lady. This, ga- this, this game was like meant to be silly and you know, you do that, but the the weird thing is, is like this game wasn't hard because literally all you had to do is like run around and like smash the button to use stuff <laughs> and just jump back and forth between different things. Dude, <laughs> I want like a TV show or a YouTube series where that they just recreate this, but in live action, like the table turning into blood and shit. Yeah, it would probably be terrifying. But yeah, like I. Remember the first time I saw that party hard track just looked like it reminded me of this game for some reason. <laughs> this looks great. Yeah, it was silly, dude. This is one of those games I remember. And like it never left my brain. Like <laughs> this thing's just been sitting in there since nineteen ninety three. Good lord. You got a lot of games like that. So, uh, let's see. What do we got next? Next, we got the trailer for Level Head. I couldn't find this because I was looking for Level Headed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Level Head, they announced it at that new showcase. The US one, like, like it happened, like, right after the podcast we did last week. Oh, okay. And now at PAX, they had some, like, full-on gameplay footage. So this is going to let you build your own levels? Yeah, like the trailer shows like the full-on editor of like 
block by block building these levels and setting these things up. Um, but then, like, it's, people are like, yeah, it's Mario Maker. But no, like, this plays more like a Terraria or like a Battle Block Theater. Yeah, the gameplay look itself looks good. Let me see if I can find a level editor. Cause this is all just gameplay. Yeah, if you search for like the Nindy's trailer or just level head trailer, like that has like in that presentation from the Nindies, it shows them like click, 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 moving, dragging stuff. See, here we go. Butterscotch shenanigans. What? <laughs> yeah, that's the name of the studio. The, the, yeah, but like, if this wasn't a level editor type deal, this looks like a good game still. Oh, wow, this looks cool. Yeah. Bonus co op. Yeah, you can play multiplayer up oh, to four people. Man, people are going to be obsessed with this. Yeah, if, if it doesn't suck. People are going to love this game. <laughs> All kinds of levels. Okay. Yeah, and they have, like I said, uh, a level share tool. There you go, Nintendo. You're letting people put stuff out on your console. That's just well, what you do, too. <laughs> Mario and Maker's you done. This game. Yeah. You highlighted this game and, you know, brought it to your showcase of games so they know what they're doing, at least. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Nintendo knows what the Switch is. They're like, we're going to put everything out on it. It's a port machine, lol. Uh, port machine. Hey, you guys. My name's Bob. I just got married. Hey, I'm not a part of sick. Okay, let's go on to something else that's dumb. <laughs> I don't know what this is, but it looks dumb. Pandemic, what is it? Pandemic Express? Yeah. Yeah, this is like a weird, like, Daisy game. Yeah, that's what I figured. Oh, punch him but in it... the butt! Yeah. And then he dropped his flashlight and his gun. Oh, there's numbers. I like that. <laughs> I, yeah, I kind of like the look of it. I think I'm just over these games. Yeah, well, because, yeah, those enemies are players. Okay. You know, so it's kind of like you get caught and you become the enemy. Huh. I guess that's... So it is semi, like, Daisy, semi Battle Royale, from what I understand so far. So is it like a hundred player start and then you die and you become one of them things? I, I I don't think so. I think it's like okay, small smaller areas Did maybe. PUBG do a zombie mode? Yeah, they had uh, the custom server yeah. browser mode. You could do zombie stuff. I just like really awesome. looking up and seeing random people up on those power lines. Like, yeah, what are you guys doing up there? That's not safe. Get down from there, Mister Zombie Man. Alright, maybe this isn't as dumb as I thought it was. Yeah, it, it it looks interesting. It's only on PC, so I'll never touch it. That's a shame. What What is he looking at? There's something coming. The fuck is that? Oh, it's another car. That was a weird thing to show you. Oh my god, this trailer so many jump cuts now. Yeah. Oh, I see. Their, their eyes are like flashlights. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, wow, that's creepy, that little mask. Yeah. What in the world? All right, this is pretty cool. Yeah, it's got it's got style. And if the gameplay part works out well enough. You got some parkour. Huh. Yeah, that was weird. If those were all players and they're just running a group like that, and, oh, whoa, they got him cornered. Oh, shit, they jump far, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. Holy shit, I forgot that part. Okay, now we're watch the this other trailer. side. They flipped the truck. Wow. All right, well, this is... I flipped on this. <laughs> that's, not, 
Uh, so that's not the first, you know, gangbang in a train tunnel I've seen today. What is exploding? The people, I think. Huh. All right. Yeah, like it. It looks cool and weird, man. I'm down for cool and weird. Now this is something. Oh, wait, it's by Tiny Build. So there you go. So that means it'll probably get released and not get much update support and die off shortly. <laughs> Damn. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. That's what I, that's what I hope this battle royale, like everyone like really investing in it. I hope we get shit like that where it's like, I, well, I would have thought of that. <laughs> yeah. That looks like weird, like zombie team fortress battle royale. That would be interesting though. If it starts with a hundred players and as people die, they become more and more monsters and, or maybe like 20 monsters and 80 players. I don't know. I have to look into that. And, uh, so next I got Swag and Sorcery. I don't know what the fuck this is. It looks like a mobile game. I watched this trailer, and it's like... Oh. It just looks kind of like a clicker, but then, like, management sim mixed in. Oh, no. It looks like just like a mobile phone version of, like, a Moonlighter. But like straight up, RPG, then we got like, Travis strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just gave up all about it. Fucking mobile, get your mobile games out of my podcast. So, th- this is like a weird crowdfunded game. I want to say from Grasshopper Manufacturer. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, really, Travis strikes again is uh, Kickstarter or whatever. I think so, because the first two, uh, No More Heroes and No More Heroes 2, were on the original Wii. Those were like third person, and you have to swing the Wii mote and shit, right? Yeah. They're, they're, well, you didn't have to swing the Wii mote. Okay. You could turn it off to where you just hit a button. But to charge up your beam sword, you did have to jerk off, essentially. <laughs> you had to shake it. Because they off? ported the first... They, they ported the first No More Heroes over to like PS3. Okay. I want to say. But yeah, so like, he's just like this dork who's a big fan of everything, buys this beam sword off of like an eBay auction, and then, you know, runs into all these assassins that are out there looking for him because he bought like the, the sword of the guy who was the big assassin. So, some, some shit like that. It's been a while since I played it. Okay. But it's like super dumb, weird, crazy references. Great music. Uh, cool characters. I think my favorite one of these uh, Suda 51 games is probably Shadows of the Damned, which is like a I've weird. I've seen that. That looks interesting. It was, it, was, it was more like Resident Evil, where it was like a third person shooter and you found different gear. Better guns. Let's see, Shadows of the Damned. What console was it on? It was on PS3, 360, PC. Yeah, it looks newer. This is a Studio 51? Yeah, that's Grasshopper Manufacturer, the same studio. Oh, wow, this does it's, look cool. Yeah, it's a really good game. I like. It's one of those games that just people just skated on it. Huh. And, you know, just didn't play it man like it's good it's it's silly when it needs to be silly it man, gets dark and weird there's a game like this that i bought somewhat recently that was weird you like played i can't remember how the gameplay went but then you like went on a date with girls and they would give you gifts Is any of this ringing a bell uh no but the <laughs> Not specifically, but that sounds like the kind of shit of like those weird uh, Japanese like dating sim games it, where outside of like the dates, it's like they try to make a weird bad game. Because that's what that like that gal gun is is like you're just like shooting a gun to make high school girls orgasm. Jesus. 
Yeah, dude, like, Gal Gun's fucking weird. <laughs> oh, this is gonna bug me. I don't know what this game is. I own it on Xbox. Yeah, it's some kind of weird game. God damn it. And with in between the missions, you go on like a dating thing to get gifts. Uh, but uh, while you while you look at that, I'll I'll go back to like the Travis Strikes Again thing. Okay. It's so like the Travis Strikes Again is like all these mini games. So like Travis gets sucked into the world of video games, and he's playing through all these different games as an actual person fighting off all these different enemies. So each each little area is like a different kind of mini game style. But everything I've seen of the game part just looks so like uninteresting and Yeah. I was like I I liked, you know, No More Heroes because it was a fun like brawler. This is just like a weird like mobile game looking like getting to fight people and hit a power up. I guess it looks like some mediocre PS1 shit. It does, and that was the first thing I thought was like, "Oh, this is new." But also, like, I always thought the the big thing about these games was the whole using the Wii, the Wii mode to strike and all that. This just looks well. Like... I mean, that was the thing you could do, but they were cool yeah. games, even if you didn't use that control scheme. But yeah, it's like it's all about the characters, and like, it's like comedy Metal Gear to a certain extent, as far as like the way the character interactions played out and like they're like all these super specifically designed things and crazy shit happens big boss fights you know at the end of the levels and this just seems like self-aware reference humor and travis wears shirts based on different video games <laughs> <laughs> i mean i mean they they the grasshopper manufacturer has been on like hard times Lately, because they put out this Dark Souls free to play game what called Let It Die. Okay. And it's, you know, as equally weird as all their other games. So, like, you're like in this weird, like, tower, you're like clones, like, your character pops up, you get off this train, there's Uncle Death, so the Grim Reaper is like a skateboard dude. <laughs> And like you find weapons in this like dilapidated tower. Like one of the weapons is like a like a like a clothes iron. Yeah. So like you can like smack people with it or hit like a short range attack by spraying the steam out. <laughs> what? <the fuck? laughs> yeah, dude, it's so dumb. Like, so they made a free to play game, and I want to say this was kickstarted to a certain extent, or Indiegogo, one of those like crowdfunding things. And Nintendo is, you know, putting it on the Switch. But, uh, yeah, man, it's just like, I wish this was in a better game. Yeah, it's co-op, but why, though? How can't you, I think I have this game hidden that I'm trying to think of. Can't you unhide shit on Xbox? You have to be able to. No, this shit is unhidden. What the fuck game? I'm going crazy. Cause now I don't see it on here. Not that. That's not not that. I don't know. Marlo Briggs looks like it's really good. I own that and I haven't played it. Speaking of random Here it is! Killer is dead. Oh kill yeah, Killer is Dead is this is this guy. It's a grasshopper manufacturer game. Yeah, that's what I thought. But it's like not good. <laughs> no, it it was it was not like like I said, Lollipop Chainsaw, both No More Heroes, Shadows of the Damned. Those are the only like good games from Guys Ever Manufacturer. Killer Seven is yes. all right. Like I it's, it's way really more really enjoyed Killer Seven. It's way more interesting than it is fun. Sure. I really enjoyed that world. Yeah, this game felt like to me like it was trying to be Devil May Cry and wasn't very good at it. Yeah, it it, it was it was like because that's the thing is like because he does such weird shit, 
they've always been budget games and you know the days of the budget game are kind of dead unless you go yeah, like super they're coming back well yeah thq nordic you fucks <laughs> yeah i think shit what was i just going with that <laughs> Yeah, Killer is Dead was just like I know, like a lot of my friends, I got, I got people I used to hang out with, and they would hype up games like that. And like the more I play stuff like that, I'm like, I just don't like this shit. Killer Seven was fucking cool, but that's also looking back on it, like I don't know if I would like it now. Yeah. Um, Killer is Dead was just too weird. I also don't get into like Bayonetta. That shit's too fucking weird for me. I played you know, it and I was I, like, I'm out. My thing is, and I intend to replay or actually play by it, by, but Bayonetta <laughs> 1 and 2. Like, what the fuck? Dude, I just had a stroke. Uh, I tried to play Bayonetta when it came out yeah. on like my Xbox or my PS3. I don't remember which one. I should have switched it to Japanese with subtitles. It's still going to be because t- too weird. No, like I, I'm down for the weirdness. It was just like I hit a point where the jokes were just so bad, and hearing them delivered, you know, well, don't get me wrong. Like I had no issue with the voice acting. I had issue yeah. with the yeah. jokes. Okay. <laughs> and and being able to kind of like filter them out in my head because they're not in English, I I, I could maybe you know tolerate them better. Yeah. Because I enjoyed playing the game. Because you know I loved. Uh, that was made by Platinum Games. I yep. loved Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Did you ever play that one? No, but I want to. I love that. I've loved you know a lot of uh, other games Platinum Games has made. They they also shovel out some horse shit a lot. You know they make too many games essentially. Right. Vanquish was really cool. I loved Vanquish, but again, the fucking bad anime ass story. Yeah, and see, I can't. Terrible, terrible see, jokes delivered in English. I was talking about this with a friend that loves Bayonetta, and they're like, "Devil May Cry is just as weird." I'm like, fuck you, no, it's not. Like, it's weird, but it's like it's not Japanese weird. I know it, like... it, it. It gets there. I mean, as somebody's beat all of them except for four. I mean, there is like the. And DMC, there's the the big slug monster that's creating the soda and shit like that. But Slurms McKenzie, sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is weird shit, but yeah, it, it's yeah. Bayonetta, I guess, was too much for me. I started playing. Yeah, it. well, because like Bayonetta and Vanquish were meant to be silly. Yeah. Like the problem with Devil May Cry was initially they were trying to be way too emo. Uh, which was kind of playing to, to to me when it came out then, me and my friends. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, now that we've kind of brought it, you know, Devil May Cry back up, it reminds me, you know, like the, the weird idea that both Devil May Cry and Onimusha were initially spinoffs of Resident Evil. Right. And now, you know, Capcom just, you know, announced they're putting out Onimusha, the first game again. Did they announce And that? you want to talk... What's up? They announced that? Yeah, they're, they're releasing it fairly soon. Like, like, early next year, beginning of next year. Holy shit, I missed that. Yeah, and... You know, a, a, a game you forget about... Like, I loved Onimusha, but I blocked out how fucking terrible... The dialogue is like the voice acting. Yeah, like I just blocked out my memory. Like I was like it was a, you know, Uncle Bad Touch. Like <laughs> <laughs> I just acted like it never happened. And when I watched that trailer, they had some of that dialogue. I was like, oh my god, this is it's not even like fun. Bad, like you know, the original Resident Evil. It's just serious lines delivered poorly, recorded poorly. <laughs> I had no idea this was happening. Yeah, th- this happened. I think this popped up like the same day or like, Looks like the day before or after Streets of Rage 4. Okay. Like both of these popped up like within like a two day span. 
and like all these nostalgia dorks like holy shit we're getting everything we ever wanted i'm now that i'm looking at this i'm wondering if i'm still gonna like this game you probably won't (laughs) i also like if this is good enough i would play through this because i never this game my friend owned so like i would go over and play a little bit you know, at his house. I never, like, got to sit down and, and play through it or anything. And I like this world. Yeah, I mean, it, it plays, like, slightly smoother to control Resident Evil. Yeah. Like, old yeah. tank control Resident Evil. Oh, that looks weird as shit. Huh. Did they announce a price for this? I think it's, like, 20 bucks. I might pay twenty bucks for this. It's gonna be. It's like it's it's twenty or thirty. It's not it's not super expensive. Uh, I'm gonna see what the reviews say, and I might get this. But yeah, I was like, wow, I I blocked this out. You know, what's weird is, you know, the main guy, the main character. I want to say the actor his likeness is based off of is dead now. I don't know. So so now there's like some weird necromancy. That's kind of been the issue with, like, especially Onimusha 2 and 3, is they use real people. Yeah. And you got to pay those people again for their likeness. And right. if the family, if the guy's dead and the family doesn't say yes, or, you know, Jean Reno just doesn't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> because he's, you know, a, a main character in, you know, 3. Yeah, that's that seems like a bad idea that they do stuff like that. Well, you it it was cool at the time and it yeah. helped like be a draw for certain people. You know, well, they were mainly like to draw people to buy it in sure. Japan. They weren't necessarily smart moves outside of Japan because people were like, who the fuck are these guys? Oh, wait, that's Leon the professional. Fuck yeah, he was a pedophile with Natalie Portman. <laughs> what the hell? Dude, if you ever see like the actual original like French cut version of Leon the Professional, I've never seen it. I know of that movie. I've never seen it. Like it's way it's it's way less vague. That uh oh shit, you know he and underage Natalie Portman may have been doing things. <laughs> they they changed a lot of that stuff in the American version called the Professional. Right. But it's a great Makes movie. Sense. Like Luke. Luke Basson is like low key, probably like one of my favorite filmmakers. Like he makes a lot of terrible shit, but the stuff that when he makes the cool stuff, like it's like amazing. Cause he did the professional. He did the fifth element. Fifth he did element. the transporter. I've never seen transporter, man. The first transporter is fucking amazing. Like if you ever want to see like super stylized, well choreographed, like okay. action movie that doesn't bullshit too much and just get I'll, straight into people fucking each other up. Is it dumb action movie or is it? It's it's like weird European action movie. Okay. Because Luc Besson's French, hmm. and most of the movie takes place you know in a foreign country. Fifth Element like, might be one of my best, my my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, Fifth Element's great. Watch that movie over and over. I should rewatch that movie. I'm a what what streaming service is that on? <laughs> uh, the Fifth Element? No idea. I haven't tried to watch it. I don't even know why we're talking about the Fifth Element. What the hell happened? <laughs> but but yeah, we, we mentioned Jean Reno, and I went. On. But yeah, uh, yeah. The transporter though, there's a there's a a scene of a fight in like a bus depot. Yeah. Jason oh. Statham is like the main character. Yeah, I've heard about the bus depot fight. Oh, dude, like it's insane. Like, he, like breaks the pedals off of like a dirt bike, straps them to his shoes, pours all this oil out on the floor. So when these guys that are chasing him come in, they start slipping, and he's just fucking like ice skating on these hoes using these fucking <laughs> metal pedals to get traction, and, like kicking people to the chest. He's like sliding on his stomach on the oil and like clotheslining people's legs out and punching them on the ground. Like, like, like I, it, it is straight up like idiotic ballet. I like movies like God. What is the name of that fucking movie where he kills somebody with a carrot? Uh, You're talking about shoot him up. Yes, <laughs> the movie's so bad. <laughs> it's great though. Like 
Paul Giamatti is the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. I like. I love shoot 'em up. I love. Oh man, there. What is that other one? I think. Oh my god, Ari from Expendables is it? Or not Expendables? Fucking. I like Expendables as well. That's what I was thinking. That um, Entourage. I have no clue. Uh, oh, you gotta watch Entourage. Uh, God, he's like one of my favorite actors, Jeremy Piven. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Jeremy Piven. I love with Jeremy Piven. Was it? Wasn't he in like Aces High or Smoking Aces? Smoking Aces. That's a fucking awesome movie. Yeah, that's all I was thinking of. You know, they made a terrible sequel to that. That was like direct to video. Nope, I don't want to hear it. Uh, Rock and Roller. <laughs> No, rock and roll is what I'm thinking of. Oh, yeah, smoking aces as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like those dumb, uh, really stylized action movies. I love those. Yeah, like the the first Transporter and both Crank movies are ridiculous experiences. Hmm. We no, I don't. Never mind. I was saying we need a sequel to the Fifth Element, but we really don't. No. We, really we don't, don't need more Jean Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg in our. I know the guy's fucking name. Back back to video games. <laughs> we went on a tangent there. Space Hitler. Sp- Spitler. Uh, Spitler. So this game is Blood Roots. I don't know what this is. Do you? Yeah. So. Oh like, shit! <laughs> that was scary. It. Yeah. It's like you're you're lumberjack samurai guy and these levels kind of play out like Hotline Miami oh. where you're just, you know, trying to just kill everybody as fast as you can and get to the next area. What in the world fighting Mr. Yeah, Wolf? like it looks cool. You're out there just hunting people down. Uh like IGN referred to it as uh samurai lumberjack because it's got like the art style almost of like the cartoon le- Samurai Jack. Yeah. And like you're just beating each other, you're just beating these guys to death. It's one hit kills. Your weapons break. The fact so that like you're just this. murdering everyone and you're trying, it seems like you're trying to find the bad guy, Mr. Black Wolf. Maybe. What, this looks that like... was the, the the mission objective. What the hell? Yeah, it's this... like yeah, I super guess it's like combo Miami. stuff. Yeah, kind of Mr. Shifty, kind of Hotline Miami. Oh shit! Yeah, so I just, yeah, I just had a random obscure game. I think it's an obscure game. Fucking, I can't pull up gameplay of it. Did you ever play Sky Hill? Never heard of it. Oh, I got an obscure game! Pulling it up now. Pulling that shit up now. So Sky Hill is a game where you are in a hotel with a bunch of monsters. You're at the top of the the hotel when some terrible thing happens. And it's yeah, it is turn-based. You have to get to the bottom floor of the hotel while killing these monsters and collecting materials, upgrade your weapons, and upgrade your base, which is just your you know penthouse suite on the hundredth floor. Yeah. And, uh, God, I kind of want you to play this. It's cheap, but the spoil the the ending is so fucking good. Should I spoil <laughs> it? Yeah, because uh, looking at this game, I know I'd. It's it's short, but yeah, it's so at the end you you fight. So the beginning of the game is they're like, "Oh, this terrible thing has happened." And he's like, "I got to get home. I got to I got to get out of here." And you fight your way through this hotel, killing all these monsters, surviving. You get to the bottom and they're like, "Hold the fuck up. Put your hands up. You just murdered everyone in the hotel." And you're like, "What what are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, all the monsters you just murdered are just people. Yeah. <laughs> That's what made me think of that. Like that, it looks like you're hunting down the back, guy, the bad guy. But maybe it's gonna turn out you're the you are the bad guy. Yeah, maybe you are the bad guy. But uh, Sky Hill is fucking awesome. I love that game. 
And I can understand how you'd see it and go, oh, maybe not for me. Why in the world is Rooster Teeth randomly on video? Oh, because it, it auto played. Yeah, Blood Roots looks like fun. Yeah, it looks it looks fun. I love the style. See, and I don't know what this is either, but Gato Robato. Yeah, man, this this game popped up. It was a random announcement at PAX. It it looks like a Downwell or you know Minute, the yeah. old school like black and white line art style. What is up with the games like that coming out? I don't know. Like they're just, I guess you know people that were real big OG Game Boy fans. Yeah. Oh, is this one with the cat? Yeah, you're you're the cat that gets in the mech suit, and it's a Metroid game. <laughs> Essentially, a Meowtroid. To the point to where they call it in their description a cat okay. Metroidvania. But you just toyed, coined the term Meowtroid. It, I just like it better. It does sound better. Well, you yeah. shoot the little bubble. Yeah. It it's so it's so much just straight up, you know, fucking Metroid, but as a cat in a robot suit, trying to save your incompetent human that got stuck in the ship that crashed, because he was the guy coming here to do the actual thing. <laughs> uh, I think I'm over this style of art already. <laughs> It, it happened with Downwell. I want Downwell, but in a nicer looking game. Yeah. And that's just the part gameplay, of the just want it to be better yeah. looking. I, I've thought about getting Minute, but yeah, I just don't like this. It's, I don't this know. aesthetic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that looks. I'm sure that's a good game. Let's see. Uh, Next up, I don't know what this is either. Grizz? Gris? Gris, yeah, I guess. In the world? It's this crazy, incredible looking adventure game. The art looks incredible. Yeah, that's what the, the game looks like actually in action when you see it get into the gameplay part. I It kind of gave me vibe which I don't know if you ever played since that's only on PlayStation. What was it? Journey. I've seen it. I haven't played it. But yeah, so it kind of gives you vibes of that if you're kind of like out in this world. As far as I can tell, there's no like dialogue that they've shown. It's all just kind of like you exploring this world world wordlessly huh. and trying to get to the end. To I guess this lady can't sing anymore. And she's trying to get her voice back. Okay. From, you know, whatever that little initial teaser was of, you know, and it looks kind of like a cool platformer with this amazing art. I do love, and see, it, I love this art. Yeah. Imagine if this was black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Lose a lot of its charm. Yeah. The color here is what makes it pop. Absolutely. What makes it stand out. Games need color. Well, not necessarily, but it helps for most people. Games need color, don't Except for the people that are colorblind. Don't contradict me, motherfucker. Uh, so this one looks a little bit more up my alley. It's, uh... What the golf? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, what, what the, the golf? Hell? So, like, when this escalates, it's like, okay, now oh, you're putting the, the human. <laughs> <laughs> and then... <laughs> what the golf, and then, indeed. <laughs> yeah. You're just trying to hit the pin. You don't. You don't have to get into the hole. Like it kind of becomes a puzzle game when you see this escalate. Oh my god! Now you're shooting the house. Yeah, at first I was like, okay, this is gonna be like desert golf. That's cool. Nope, this is uh, just fucking weird. There's one oh, uh, shit, it gets to later on. <laughs> Where yeah, the hole move and you hit it. And it's like bad hole. <laughs> what? Or bad flag. Now you now you are the hole. Hole in one. Got it. You you're fucking clever. <laughs> <laughs> There's one where you're a soccer ball and this one you're shooting against fans. There's one where there's like just a, a hill full of like kids trying to kick the soccer ball. <laughs> so you gotta like dodge the fuck. Cause he's, just, he's, just, he's just like, get that weak shit out of here. <laughs> 
Because the reason why I say it's kind of like a puzzle game is because when you go to aim, yeah. it slows down time. Yeah. Yeah, this one, like this this gauntlet of little fuckheads, oh man. <laughs> He's just fucking with them. <laughs> He's just juking them. There's like, there's like a hot dog vendor down there just chilling out. This looks great. Yeah, this one, I, I saw this. I was like, man, I, I need this in my life sooner than later. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Why is it that now it's fucking worms? Yeah. Spider ball. Spider ball. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? Yeah, man. <laughs> They're doing weird shit with golf. Cliffhanger. This is the... I'm going to tell you right now what's going to be the driving force for me with this game. I got to know what the fucking title at the end is. What the? Goal goal. <laughs> All right, stop. Stop. I'm <laughs> stopping this video. I don't want any more spoilers. Hey, this... now you're golfing with portals. Holy crap. This that this this most spoilerific <laughs> video I've ever seen. I don't want to see any more. <laughs> it's it's like all it's like the good parts of WarioWare with shit. It's like here's all the fun mini games. Just play them. I need more information. What the golf? What is it? Fuck off! I don't want to know about Trump. <laughs> so many Trump things. Pre-launch tournament. What's it gonna be on? Apparently, it's just on PC. That would be sad. Uh, on... Android, Windows, okay. iOS, Linux, Mac. Okay. Does it say how much? Let's see what the golf on Steam. It doesn't say. No price yet. Oh my god, I can download a prototype! I'm downloading a prototype. <laughs> I'm sending this to you on Discord. This is going to be my game of the year. <laughs> that game looks like I, too I, much. I, I had a feeling you'd appreciate that. That's the reason why I posted it. I like on their, their fig.co is why is the golfer not part of the game? And it shows gifts of him just fucking up and flying off the cliff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is a first person golfer? Oh my god, some of the games are some of the levels are in first person. This is the kind of thing we need in our life. There's a cluster truck level. Yeah, it's probably also tiny build publishing it. This is the dumbest fig page I've ever seen, and I love it. You can even golf a hole in one, which is the one we saw in the trailer. Yeah. They have a Discord. Holy crap. Well, now we know where uh, Jacob's going to be learning what the golf Discord. It's like, hey, I need to get a hold of you. We're going to do the podcast. He's like, what? Who are you again? I need golf. Yeah, they have what we did before, and it's just like a gif of... I can't even tell what any of these games are. It's moving too fast. One of them looks like Subway Runners, maybe? I don't know. I'm excited for this game. I'm sad that I missed this fig thing. It's like Kickstarter. You ever been on here, fig.co? Yeah, well, fig, you're, if you pay enough, you get like residuals. What? I didn't know that. Yeah, you like there are certain tiers where you become essentially like an actual investor in the product. Holy shit. I was not aware of that. I want to say that's what Fig is, because I know uh, Double Fine has been putting a lot of their stuff on Fig. Oh, well, fuck Double Fine. <laughs> we'll go into that another day. <laughs> uh, and the last trailer we have to watch is... Anthem, which I can't, still can't decide if I'm excited about it. <laughs> I I know I'm a hard no. Yeah. Well, I, just because, like, I probably won't mind playing the story, but then the the repeat kind of like Destiny like grind loop, which yeah. probably they'll probably make it way more you know reasonable and not dumb. <laughs> Really? Why? Why would you think that? <laughs> well, because it's EA, 
and they want to give you all the cool loot and sell you, you know, cosmetic skins. Or they, <laughs> they want the cool loot to be paid for as well. <laughs> but no, Battlefront 2 is dead. I don't know. I I look at this game and like it kind of looks like Destiny, but it looks like the shooting's not as good as Destiny. Cause that's like I that's why I love Destiny because the shooting is damn good, some of the best. And then this is just like a third person shooter. There's not even any cover like the division. Yeah, but it's well, Bioware. You got, you know, giant combat suits. Yeah. Bioware that are your character classes. So we'll see. I mean, every apparently every story is, is actually going to be like you make choices like a Bioware game and your crew might be different. Yeah, but I think I saw something today where it's like every conversation gives you two options. Yeah, probably, because that's how most games are. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess that's it for Anthem. <laughs> That was like the one we were I mean, saving for the end. Yeah, it well, it, it looks cool, but it's one of those things until I can actually touch it and see it, just looking at it does not, you know, do anything for me. There is going to be a demo. Yeah, they got uh, they got a, a beta they're putting February out. February 1st. Currently so it comes limited. out in like March. Yeah. Yeah, currently limited to pre-orders and EA Access members, of course. Though, I will say, um, I'm going to play this. Probably day one, actually, because of that uh, oh, what EA Access Origin or Premiere or whatever it is. Like, where you get the AAA $60 games day one through their subscription service. I think it's only 10 bucks too. Yeah, I'll probably be getting that. Be so, worth a shot. Yeah, exactly. Like with Battlefield Five, I'll probably get the premiere thing to play that. Because like Battlefield One, I played a shitload of, and then I'm done. I'll, it'll be the same way with Five. So if I can just get it for a month, I'm good. So that's uh that's all we got. We both had an obscure game today. Yeah. A good day. <laughs> we covered a lot of shit today, man. We did. Uh, you got anything else you don't want to cover? Any other trailers I missed? Uh, no, uh, not not that I can immediately think of. I just, you know, I'm just desperately waiting for Spider Man. When is that? That is the seventh. So oh, Friday. Oh, okay. And I took a vacation for this fucking thing. Damn. So so Fatty potentially could have Spider Man completed. By the time we do this next podcast, I expect you to. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, have like it done. I, I have it on my desk it. by Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I may have mentioned before, you know, when Infamous Second Son came out, which was you know the last uh, Sucker Punch game. Uh, but this is Insomniac making Spider Man. Oh, okay, you know, they make thought. similar games. They're, they're, they're similar kind of worlds. But when that came out, like I had that thing platinum in one like thirteen hour sitting. Jesus! <laughs> like <laughs> it's like yeah, I picked it up around noon because they didn't have a midnight release. It's, I bought it, you know, physical copy at like GameStop or somewhere. It was no, it was GameStop because my friend, you know, my friends were still working there. It was like at noon. I drive home, I crack it open, I start playing it, and around like one thirty in the morning. I just took a picture of my monitor and sent it to like my friend that worked there and said, Hey, <laughs> guess what I just did. Infamous is uh I owned a PlayStation three for just a few months. I can't remember why I think I sold it because I needed money basically. Yeah. Um but I, like so many dicks. Yeah, exactly. But uh That's why Bob was losing his voice, he's sick. <laughs> I own Infamous was one of the PlayStation exclusive games I owned. Along with SOCOM, which was a mistake. Uh, because I, I fucking love SOCOM 1, 2, and 3. Um, but Infamous and... It was Infamous and Killzone, I think I had. And man, I want a PlayStation again just for Infamous. 
Because that game was yeah. so good. Infamous 1 and 2 are fucking great. Second Son is still really good. It's just short. Oh, okay. Like, I've had to refrain from thinking about Infamous because then I'm like, how much is a PlayStation again? Let me see. <laughs> how much, uh, how long do I need to save up for a PlayStation to get Infamous? Yeah, like, I mean, you can get PS3s pretty cheap these days. I would just get a PS4. Well, is it on PS4? You can't. You can't play it on PS4. For fuck's sake, Sony. I mean, you could use PlayStation Now and stream it. No. Not doing that. Never mind. I don't need a PlayStation. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Infamous 1 and 2 Done. are only... And uh, uh, Festival of Blood was a standalone uh, game they built off of Infamous 2, which was vampires in New Orleans, essentially. What the fuck? <laughs> it was great, dude. Yeah, like... But uh, one thing I do want to say before we go yeah. is fuck the Nintendo eShop oh boy. for fucking making you wait until 11 a.m. Central to play oh, your game you bought. You, you flipped the fuck out on Discord. I just let you. I was like, I'm not even going to say anything to him. <laughs> I was like, no, I I knew it. And then it still made me mad. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I woke up. I was like, because I forgot. I just went to sleep. And I naturally just woke up fairly early, like two or three hours beforehand. And I was like, seriously, game? You fucks? What are you doing? Like, like by the time the store unlocks here, it's literally another day in a certain time zones. Like, <laughs> yeah, like it's mean, already the next day, probably. You know, if I, if I really counted out the math, I was like, what are you fucks doing? That's going to be me, too. Oh, man, I just realized the benefit of having a job when a game comes out. <laughs> I'll say that's going to be me Tuesday with Destiny, but no, I'm going to be at work. When I get home, it'll be out, because Destiny, for me, yeah. Forsaken wouldn't come out till 1 o'clock p.m. So it'd be all day, it'd be like, fucking, when is this thing coming out? Because <laughs> it yeah. was 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., Destiny 2 is being taken offline for maintenance. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it just happened to have a day off when the fucking yeah. messenger came out. I can see that and big just annoying. Just bullshitting for hours, like, watching some... I, like, I, I fucking watched the 1986 Transformers movie for no reason. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's Should... what I did as I was, you know, trying not to fucking beat off or break my Switch. <laughs> All right, so that has been the Future Gamers Podcast. <laughs> Thank you for listening, guys. Uh, Troll, you're streaming more often now, aren't you? Well, yeah, I mean, if I'm playing a game, I just go ahead and, you know, two-button click to have it up and running. So where can they find you at? Just uh, that pesky underscore, Trollbeard underscore. You'll find me most places. Twitter, Twitch, PSN. Or if you want to go to futurevillains.com slash trollbeard, I'm going to make you a page probably tomorrow. Oh, oh now, now my nipples are pointy. <laughs> I was saying, they you've had been run here, away at the site of Anthem. You've been here for 11 episodes. I figured it's about time you got a page on the website. Add, you, add your Twitter handle to the description and whatnot. Yay. It's official. You remember, no, you're not getting paid. Actually, I'm going to need $100 in dues. And... Uh... <laughs> And at that point, the <laughs> old Duke boys done had it. Damn right. Just jumped a goddamn bridge to the oasis. <laughs> like Go there shit. to that Blackbeard Bob land of not being here. Oh, yeah, no, he's not sick. I just kicked the shit out of him because he hasn't paid dues. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. Bob will whip my ass. Yeah, you, you just stole his Pokemon cartridges <laughs> until oh. he pays up. Actually, speaking of Bob and Pokemon, one little thing I want to call out. This motherfucker <laughs> has had me on a bad habit for like... Ha you ever have a bad habit for like half a second? <laughs> he sent me pictures of uh, the Pokemon trading card game, and he got a bunch of cool hollows and shit, and I was like, that that looks rad. So I went yeah. down to Dollar Tree, because that's the only place I know where to buy them. And got some packs, opened them up, bunch of garbage, bunch of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I 
just nothing but garbage cards. And then, like, he missed, he sent me pictures the other day of these. Hold on. Let me find them. I'm going to put them on a fucking thing. Yeah. I. It was, it was like, you opened up those packs, it was like you decoded Ingrams in the first six months of Destiny 1. No, oh, Destiny hey. 2! <laughs> <laughs> well, again, yeah, they, they know how to disappoint for eight months and then make an okay game. <laughs> Asshole sends me all the hollows he has. I didn't get shit! So, yeah, I had a bad habit for half a second. It's Bob's fault. Yeah. It's like, God damn you, Bob. And with that, we're going to sign off here. Thank you for listening, guys. You can find Trollbeard at twitch.tv slash Trollbeard underscore. Is, is Twitter the same? Yeah, same thing. And you can find me on uh, youtube.com slash best of the realm, twitch.tv slash best, I mean, mixer.com slash best of the dot com. Yeah. I think we're going to stream here from now on because I've been told recently by a, a reliable source that uh, Mixer has a better community. So we'll see. Uh, well, there, yeah. well, there's it's not as popular, so there's less people in here like spamming like their fucking mobile phone game and I'm okay porn with websites. <laughs> so maybe we'll find a community here, hopefully. Yeah, mixer.com slash best in the realm, I believe it is. Uh, Twitter.com slash Best of the Realm. I'm at Best of the Realm. Facebook, Best of the Realm Gaming. Um, you can find all this stuff, including the Lark Brothers' new adventures, on FutureVillains.com. That's F-E-W-T-R-U-E-V-I-L-L-A-N-S.com. 